we all know what that means. Woo! Let's pull back the curtain and get it on. Okay. Um, so yes, the dwarves have descended down into the into the chamber. Beecham yeah. just smashed the gem and vanished, leaving you to face these four unpleasant individuals. So again, to remind you, the one dwarf, even though he doesn't have his magical firebrand axe, is the one that um, the oathbreaker himself, the one that you. Saved from being turned to stone, only to bring him to justice before the Dwarven court. Um, the <laughs> other... That was appropriately timed, MC. <laughs> um, Nelson for the win. Um, the other one is the scout that not only helped lead you here, um, but in theory led you down a potentially lethal path in the under chambers before. Yeah. The other two you have not seen before. One of them is a shirtless, incredibly muscled dwarf holding a huge, big two-handed axe with a mohawk, uh, bright orange mohawk and huge fanned-out orange beard. The other, um, and he has like black tattoos all over his body. The other is wielding two hand axes. He has like forest green tattoos all over his body and he has an eye patch also having a more grayish mohawk and more of a kind of a pointed braided beard. I think they're brothers. So, um... I have a suspicion. Either that or they all belong to some particular, like, You're weird... Crazy. Fashion <laughs> right. cult. Um, <laughs> right, a fashion cult, the Mohawks. So fashion cult. <laughs> um, like yes, maybe you can survive this by challenging them to a walk-off. Who knows? Um... <laughs> Not with Kia's hair. Yeah, oh. Kia's lacking the hair, unfortunately. All right. Um. So yes, they've descended. Oh God. Um. You've seen Beecham disappear before your very eyes, and it is clear to you that these fellows have every intent on claiming all this massive, whoppy great collection of cash for themselves. All right. Um. The spokesperson seems to be the little um spindly um, scout fellow. I'll move him forward just a little bit. Alright. Uh, did they go. say something? I don't remember if they said something. Are they spokespersoning? Or are they oh, well, one, one of, the one that kind of came forward and basically <laughs> said um, you know, that they had every intention of taking all of this and Oh. In slightly more polite words, fuck you. <laughs> I I would I I would want to move if he moves forward as they approach and says that if I can I mean or uh, what um you would what depends what you want to do well I, w I would be moving I would be walking back in a protective way towards Kia okay so you want to kind of like shh, 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 through the through yeah, the loop but, uh, of treasure in that direction backing up slowly ready for anything really but okay. All right, so as you're going to do that... You better get out of here when you can. You don't want to see what happens to you. These guys are going to scatter and disperse. No, no, no. <laughs> um, to kind of, like, get some strategic positioning around the chamber. Um, if they started doing that, I don't think I would hesitate with casting stuff. All right, well, in that case, it's going to come down to initiative then, isn't it? So I guess we should roll that. Yeah. Not a surprise action because they're just walking okay. No well, surprise. you kind of wandered off and everybody was did, talking. Yeah. So, um, if Kia's. Yeah. There's no surprise action because you all know each other's there. No, that's true. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, well, that's we right. opened Photoshop. Why is everyone opening Photoshop? Yeah, tonight? I did that earlier. All right, Kia is with a 15 on the initiative. What about Rado Bear? Wait, I didn't roll that. Oh, that's that's me. I'm sorry. I what are you doing? <laughs> oh, why does it say Keeliana then, you butthole? Because you gave me control to work on the spells that was barked up, and I accidentally moved to that. <laughs> oh, okay. So I rolled All right, a 15. so Radovan got a 15. Okay. Okay. So you get okay. Kia, you know you got you know you did worse. <laughs> <laughs> 13. All right. Okay. So, um, yes, they begin to disperse around the chamber. So, um, Kia, you, um, Radovan... Uh, has the initiative. What do you want to do? Well, you, you've done your move action. 
Okay, so that's my move action, and I'm casting Holy Sword. Holy Which is sword. a glory domain spell I've never really had the opportunity to freaking cast. Nah, I, I don't recall selected. you ever casting it. Um, basically, it is a domain spell that gives me um, a magic circle versus evil. Okay. And boosts my weapon to a plus five instead of a plus four. It overwrites the plus right, four. Right, so it basically kind of creates it like as a holy avenger. So the, the mace just like lights up. And it would do and 2d6 extra damage against evil. If they are evil, I'm assuming they're evil because they're not very nice people. So I'm hopeful that some of them are at the very least evil. Alrighty. Um, and it also gives um, anyone within my... That's a friend of mine, a 10 foot radius, which she's not at the moment, uh, plus two deflection to armor. Right. So as long as That's... Kia stays within that 10 feet, she gets plus two deflection bonus, right? And, uh, and uh, yeah, part of the um, magic circle is also like a pl uh, plus two on saving throws. Right. And you can't get penetrated by evil magic, basically. Can't get penetrated. Yeah. Very useful. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, yeah, she's not quite there yet. Ah, uh, so. she's close enough. I mean, you know, you you see a circle, Kia. Like, blah, yeah, there's like a glowy me. a glowy protection oh. looking circle that says "Step here for safety." Um, it's very <laughs> friendly, everybody. It's a, it's a friendly Step circle. Step inside the circle. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, as long as you stay within a square of Radavan. Like, as long as you're both within the same square, which technically, I'm going to say you are because the majority of your body is and most of Radavan's is. So, right now, you're like right on the cusp. It's like just touching. You have to like lean your head in to make sure that you're covered. All right. So, Radavan, you have cast that. Okay. So, your mace suddenly flares up with the power of holy light. Kia, you get to act next. All right. Well, I'll. Like so I'm going to reposition these a little bit closer because they wouldn't have made it that far yet. Oh, sorry, I'm muted. Out of the earth, pop up three <laughs> large-sized earth elementals. Yes. Oh, you rolled. Oh, you I rolled, rolled three. All, I All rolled right, three. so you want three oh. Rockies. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get some rocky um, action. Adrian! In here. I would like one here. I got to get get them in here first. Okay. Right. Okay. And they are considered large. Jamie, so lucky, lucky. I know. Lucky. I'm so Sorry. Lucky. Show me again where you want them. Um, one right here. One right here. <laughs> The one right here. No, right here. Too late. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. All right. And no, they... you want it here? No, it doesn't matter. In front of the other guy, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. okay, so you summon the three rock elementals. Yes. Rock, Rocky, and Rocky. Okay. And they all do their full attacks immediately. Okay, so um, you're gonna, let's go ahead and move them to where it's obvious. So the one at the top, is he attacking one of each of the dwarves or is he attacking one of the other? Um, he's going to attack the one on the right. Okay, he's gonna attack the one with the green tattoos. Yeah. All oh. right, um, we're rolling for him first then. Oh my oh. God. All right, um, okay. he misses <laughs> twice. Yeah, well, um, that was just my warm-up roll. Okay, he gets a minus four and he's next to hit. Okay. And then the one in the middle does his full attack as well. That would be a successful strike. Twice? Damn. And so would that. Okay, so the one in the middle lands two solid mighty blows. Great. <laughs> Delivering a total of 35 points of damage. The little dwarven fellow yells out and screams in pain as the two massive maulers come crashing down on his shoulders. Um, crumbling under the strength of the blows, he kind of like rolls back a little bit and gets himself in a 
one need kind of heroic landing pose, ready to react. Okay, the other one? And the last one punches that guy. Oh! <laughs> okay, is it a crit? Please. Natural 20! Oh! And it is a crit. Okay, so you've got a hit. Plus the first crit of the night. Oh my god. So you roll the damage dice twice for that one. So that would actually be okay. an extra couple of, um, you know. So thingies. I'm just going to roll just the initial without all the bonus. So just two normal hits. Okay. Because I don't want to get confused. So that's the hit. And then I roll oh, damage. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't, roll, we didn't start the freaking betting. Oh, well, <laughs> sorry guys, I got it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do this. Who will roll the... The next 20. <laughs> Dude, everybody betted, though. I remember them saying it's not working, but they were betting anyway. Yeah, but it, it didn't take any of their money either. They should have waited <laughs> until it actually was turned on. <laughs> All right, let's do that now. Jesus. Betting bet started. Me. See, pay attention. <laughs> Who will roll the second natural 20 of the night? Minimum bet 500, you can enter by timing, estimation point bet. Zero for Spook, one for Jane, two for Shaggit, three for nobody. Get your bets in now. <laughs> I do apologize. All right. Um, okay. Um, so what are we looking at for damage? 27 plus 7? Yes. 34. All right. I'm sitting as Kia in the back going, yeah, 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 like shadow boxing. Hit it, hit it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Hugh okay. Jackman. Real steel. <laughs> That's a good movie, I think, personally. All right, it is the dwarf's turn mm -hmm. to retaliate. The first one at the top. Hit. And the second attack. By the same fellow is also a hit. Okay, this is the one using the two one-handed axes, so he actually has a third attack. Ooh. Oh my god. These guys get near me. Oh! Hey, did you down? Thanks for the host. At the perfect time for a possible crit. Um, <laughs> Alright, is that a crit? Let's find out. No, luckily. Okay, so it's two, two solid hits from this guy. That'll be. That's a lot of damage. It's a bad. Uh, I know. All right, <sighs> thirty-seven points of damage is what the top dwarf does. Okay, this dwarf is also right here, so he is pretty much going to give the guy um, much of the same. Okay. So let me go ahead and move this over so I can use just it. Just don't give him much of the same. Just like a little not, less of the same. Although his mouth guard out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are oh, those both yeah. hits? For sure hits. Yeah. For sure Ooh. hits. All right. Oh, okay. He is using the big thing. Long. And he will be doing... Oh wow, you lucky, lucky bastard. Yay! <laughs> All right, um he only hits for oh, I'm still barely alive. A okay. total of nine Oh, hang on. I rolled 1d12. It should have been 2d12. Oh man. <laughs> so roll another Oh, so I just rolled roll the other d12. d12. Okay, I got 12 health left on this guy. And okay. seven. There you go. Thanks for the host, guys. <laughs> okay, he's got officially 5 health left. Oh, so he's that like... one's almost done. All, All right, the hard. next little dwarven fellow. Yeah. The green one. The guide? You think the so. Oh. Sorry. Um, all right, so the one that's um, already hit, he is going to basically... Where is he at here? Okay. Right, what he is going to do is he is going to make a strategic retreat mm -hmm. behind... Not you. You stay put, you... Uh, behind this guy okay you notice so he moves back you notice he pulls out a vial from like a belt pouch and begins to pour it over one of his throwing daggers oh shit all right okay. the other one who is your huge big buddy 
um, is going to... This is the friend that you had before. He is going to make his attacks. Plus 20. <sighs> oh, yeah. And hits for three with his mighty axe. Yeah, these guys. Smart. Oh. Unloading for 46 Ugh. points on that okay. elemental. Like hacking him like a tree. Right, as he as he smashes into him, you hear him yelling at the top of his voice as he gleefully just like ha 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 with his axe. Oh, having seems to be having entirely too much fun. He's like You'll go down way quicker than these will once these are out of the way. All right, that's their attacks. Radovan, what you got, buddy? Seeing the carnage on the one on top and the one on bottom, I am going to be casting Hold Monster, which affects any living thing, so it's not just a monster. Right. And I'm going to do it on this one, this red mohawked guy. Okay. Uh, spam the spell. Oosh. All righty. Um, 21 DC. Monster. So uh, will affect up to seventeen rounds. Um, but they they, they get a they get to save every round. 20, yeah, so, so twenty one will save to to avoid it. Um, let's see. Um, does it have like a hit dice max on this one? No, doesn't say anything about that. It's a. Six level strength domain spell. No, that's right, because it's the six level hold monster. No, you're right. It's not like a regular whole person. Yep, okay. No. And you're casting on the one with the red? Yep. All right. Willpower save needs a 21 or higher to beat it. And no! Yes! He fails. Okay. Your hold spells rarely seem to work, but this time... <laughs> <laughs> it did okay so he is held you see him as he prepares to raise his axe and you can see his eyes like darting backwards and forwards and his grimacing teeth like he's trying to fight through it but with no avail Kieliana. that is awesome um <clears throat> I am going to stay behind Radovan Okay. And uh, I'm going to summon. <laughs> Since we figured this out last episode, uh -huh. I'm going to be summoning a huge one right behind them because the ceiling's really tall, right? Um, Jesus. The ceiling is pretty tall, yeah. Yeah, that should work. All right. So just one huge Balboa, the father. Yeah, that's interesting. Why that popped up. Of earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's going to be right ready right to hit this one here. This guy. Jesus. I'm All right. Trying, I'm trying to get my page back. Get your elemental on. It's loading. <laughs> okay. All right. So you do that. Um. All right. Uh, you need initiatives for them all as well. You can roll for your yes. huge. You can yes. get, roll for your huge one first. Okay. Who will gain a plus two flanking bonus as well? Well, wow. here's his initiative, for the big one, and here's okay. the little ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lovely. This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once my page loads, I can attack, but it's not loading yet. You broke it, haven't you, Kia? Yeah. So many boxers, um, yes. I know, right? It's like the, <laughs> I, it's like a yeah, royal like rumble gone one. wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, he seems like that dwarf is having a blast, so I kind of wanted to put him in his place a little. So, all right, uh, go ahead. And uh, I can't, I don't know yet. I'll, okay, it's loading, it's loading. Resto Ranger, appreciate the donation, buddy. We'll uh, thank, thank you. you properly. Thank you, man. Break Much appreciated. Thanks, oh, damn, I have, like, you no dare spells. come down into this vault and try to steal our gold. Your gold? 
<laughs> the glow that will protect all of you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> it still is not loading. God. So what's not loading? I'm trying to just get to my page so I know what to roll. <laughs> just my semester page. It's not loading on anything? It's just really slow. You broke so, it. You? Well, you stop downloading like the naughty things. <laughs> you know? yeah, turn off your man porn. Um, Alright, uh, so you, I'll look it up for you. Give me a second. It's a huge elemental. Have you got it now? Nope, it's still loading. Okay, then I will tell you, shall I? <laughs> All right, hu a huge earth elemental. Um, full attack with... A, basically, it can make two slam attacks, and it is a plus 19 to hit. 2d10 plus 9 should it do so. Perfect. So... So, yeah, d20 plus 19 for its hit, but it gets flanking, so it gets a 2d20. Basically, it's d20 plus 21. 21. Cool. And it also gets another plus one for being on the ground and attacking. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's so. a hit. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't so. you have cried if I'd have said that missed? No, sorry. <laughs> I would have. I would have just given All it right, right so yes, your yeah. massive elemental slams him from behind for two solid hits. So a 4d10 plus 18 damage. Jesus. It'll be plus one to each. For 45. <laughs> and it's finally loaded, so congrats. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Alrighty. And let me fix okay. this. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, that took so long. Yeah. What's wrong with you, Kia? I know. Your, your, your elemental was so slow it missed the entire combat. And I'm just <laughs> whispering to Radovan, like, hey. Do we just stay here? What do we do? Alrighty. Um, it is their turn to retaliate. Should we back up? Okay. Um, Alright, so the green one, once again, is going to attack your elemental. Oh, he has like five health, right? Oh, shit. I'm not sure they attacked yet. Um, no, they, 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 they their initiative, initiative, they go last. Okay, but wasn't until... it the last round that they should have... No, that was no, when, a, they when they appear, started. they attack immediately, but then you have to know the initiative to see where they oh, come yeah. in combat the yeah. next round. Yep. You're right. This one might... I think we're going to say goodbye to this one. I... <laughs> just just a feeling. <laughs> Unless he rolls, like, really bad. <laughs> Unless he rolls really bad. Uh, okay. Well, he didn't get a credit, at least. <laughs> oh, my God. And okay, this guy's dead. Yeah, this guy's dead. Three hits. He's gone. All right, <laughs> yeah. So dead. this he literally just ginsu's <laughs> through your dude, hacking as he does so, um, and clearing that mess up. Okay, this one is held. He gets to make a saving throw. Twenty-one. One d twenty plus six has twenty-one to beat. Fuck. And he Ooh, does. Dang. So he breaks out of the hold no. person. As you see him basically like, ah! and then charges <laughs> forward to, fa um, to uh, face uh, this one. He, uh, it's a full round action to break free. Yep. Yes. Um, but he can't, yeah, he can't do anything, but that's what he's going to take his five okay. feet to step over to here. Um, Got it. Okay. Okay. This dude is going to, you see him flip the dagger up in his hand, catching it, and then goes and hurls uh. it at Radovan. Radovan! Okay. All right, okay. Uh, my AC is 24. A 30 is a hit. Oh, <laughs> Come on, bitch. <laughs> All right, Radovan, no, you poison. physically take three points of damage from the dagger. <laughs> and I have to take a saving throw. Would you like to I make know. a fortitude saving throw, please? Uh, DC? 21. Oh, God. Oh, yes! Ooh, yes. So yes. close! Holy oh. shit. That's what, that's what the plus 15, too. Oh, All God. right, okay. As the, drag, <laughs> as the dagger kind of, like, hits you and just, like, creates a gash in your shoulder and drops to the floor, you notice the residue of some kind of strange, dark, almost like a dark blue, thick, gooey substance around the entrance to the wound. It begins to burn, like with the intensity of like a really serious wasp sting and you can feel it starting to kind of like f 
fade down into your shoulder muscles and stuff like that. Um, but you are able to kind of grit your teeth, ignore the pain, and carry on <clears throat> regardless. All right, this dude down here, um, who I can't seem to target because you've got big, massive dudes all over the place. <laughs> um, okay, he backs. He is going to take a five-foot step to get to here. And then he is going to unload on this dude. Swinging with his massive two-handed axe for the first time. That's a hit. The small guy? Yep. And I'm going to roll him as we go, because uh, things and stuff, you know, and abilities. All right, so you're, you're, he takes 15 from the first hit. How many hit points has he got left? Um, seven. He swings again for the second time and hits. Oh, good. <coughs> All right, yep, so that one's dead. All righty. Um, okay. He cannot reach the big one. So he actually can't get a cleave attack in on him because he actually has to move to get to that elemental. Because um, your huge elemental has a 10 foot reach with his huge arms. This little dude does not. Um, so instead he is going to use his movement to kind of just get in there toe to toe with the elemental. Alright, um, the last one is this dude. I, I haven't rolled for him yet, have I? Which one? The red one? No, you did. He, he had to use... He broke free, so he... That's right. Out. Yes, I did. I did. All right, so that's the dwarves. Now it's the little elemental that's left alive. He gets to act. Little guy? <laughs> little baby. You'll be just attacking the guy right in front of him, since that's... Who's he? Who's in front of him? Oh, my God. Um, so he Do hits I crit? Once, potential crits. Do I? Do um, I? And that is a crit. Yes. Yes. Okay. It is, yeah. It, it's, it looks great and all, being shirtless and being all super muscly and tough, but it doesn't help you in the armor class um, <laughs> side of things. So, um, all you know. of the damage together. Hey! That's 56 good. damage dealt to the red fellow. All right. And let's put some damage markers on him. Okay. Um, now it's back up to Radovan. So, Radovan, what are you going to do? I am going to cast, because I'm, I'm going to do a free action to cast my Fear Aura. So if they get within 20 feet of me, they have to make a saving throw against the Fear. Um, I'll, they're not, I don't think they are within They're not yet. yet, but I'm just trying to get a good gauge of how far, how close that is. It's only a 17 DC, but right. it lasts 17 rounds. And then... As my actual action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. I'm staying right where I... I'm gonna, I might back up like three feet, but... Um, where are you, Spiritual Weapon? There you are. Come on. And this gets an attack, one attack immediately after being summoned, and I'm going to cast it... Give me just a second to get one. Sure. I'm going to cast it on with the green dude, because he's a free agent now, and I want him to you know not be but even though people <laughs> you want him to not attack be. it it won't he won't he can't attack it i mean there's no point but <laughs> it's a huge candlestick as <laughs> Mark <Marla> said <laughs> well, we're fixing to change Marla that <laughs> yes that was another kia 20. <laughs> all right there is your glowing candlestick i'll make it a little longer thank there. you it's, e it's easier to see right and it's just one attack for on his on the back of his head. Just thump. All right. For eight, if it's a hit. And that is a hit for eight. All right. This is getting scary. They're only green. All righty. Okay. Um. Kia. All right. I step this way, and um. I take out the last of what looks like a little bit of uh, ruby dust. Uh huh. And you see me, uh, you know, do magics and attempt. <laughs> <laughs> as I attempt a force cage. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So you're doing... Um, okay. Which I would like to attempt a 20-foot cube Where? around these guys. All right. Let me go ahead and get a force cage then. Just in, on the Jeez. off chance it works. <laughs> on the off chance it works. Oh, boy. <laughs> All righty. And I will need to size it appropriately. <laughs> okay, so let's Hold see. On. They need. There's no save? No, there's no actual save against the spell itself. Um, okay, so you're actually casting. Do you have. So is this the actual Force Cage spell or are you using the other thing to cast it? Oh, it's the actual Force Cage spell. Okay. All right. Well, the yeah, the downside to this is basically you piss away fifteen hundred gold pieces of <laughs> dust, um, yeah, which is which is well, I'm you like, might <laughs> as it has no saving throw. Okay, so the power <gasps> spell brings into being an immobile, invisible cubic prism composed of either bars of force or solid walls, straight. your choice. Creatures within the area are caught and contained unless they are too big to fit inside, in which case the spell automatically fails. Teleportation, other forms of astral projection or travel provides means of escape, but the force wall of bars extend into the ethereal plane, blocking ethereal travel. Like a wall of force spell, a force cage resists dispel magic, but it is vulnerable to a disintegration spell. And it can be destroyed by a sphere of annihilation or rod of cancellation. So, um, you want to dump it... 20 foot cube. Um, like, right... Oh, it is 20 foot, not 40, so I want to get these two guys. Jesus. Alright. <laughs> so, kind of like here? Yes. Okay, yes. well, to make life a little more understanding, <laughs> um, we're going to put here. Okay. okay, out of nowhere, the cage of force appears. Um, I can go ahead and do this just to make it a little bit more, you know, forcey. <laughs> make it, make it the, glowy. His weapon is trapped in there with them, so. That's yep. true. And the weapon is Fun. in there as well. Alrighty, okay. Good job, Kia. And then I'm going to hide back behind Radovan and hold on to okay, his Okay, well, the, this one immediately... You see him start smashing into the bars and nothing works. The other one being more meticulous, you see him kind of like do the same thing as before. He reaches into his belt, pulls out two throwing daggers, Ugh. and then douses venom across the two <laughs> blades okay. and then just throws the, 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 the remaining bottle on the ground with a tsh in disgust. All right, the red tattooed dwarf. Um, he's going to attack your dude. Okay. Swinging his cool. massive axe with sheer vengeance. He strikes twice. Delivering. Don't do it. 43 Boy. points of damage. Okay, still alive. All right. Um, the other dude who is toe to toe with your massive friend. Okay. Wow. Uh, 23 and a 19. Does the 19 hit? 19 barely hits, yes. Okay. Um. All right. As he's. Holy shit! 50 points of damage! Double 12. <laughs> the bigger they are, the harder they fall! What the what? That's rough. Mm -hmm. That's rough. Thanks for the reason that Rock Rocks for much love. Holy. Take your pants off, oh, hit the high. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Um. Uh, Your little fellow. Did the big elemental go yet? Uh, uh, oh, yet. you haven't rolled his initiative yet. Yeah, he had 15. Oh, actually, he had 15. He should have gone the same time as Radavan, so you need to roll for him. I'll just, yeah, I'll do that. He went at the top of the round. His first hit. <laughs> <laughs> Natural 20! Bad for you, but come on, Kia. Is that a crit? 
Um, that is not a crit against this guy. <laughs> Any of the others, it would have been. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, Kia. Like, good job, but come on. It's... Yeah, I like it. All right, two hits. The massive elemental lands his mighty paws on the guy <laughs> twice. You're like, really? I like this. That's all right. For 35. Where is he? Okay. I am rolling like a beast. Could I catch up? Um, you could. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> you need a lot more. That You need uh, quite a few more. <laughs> but it is doable. We'll see. All right. Okay. So that was his. Then the dwarves went. Now he's your little guy. Okay. <laughs> Come on, little, little guy. Little guy. He's still twice the size of most of you. That's a punch <laughs> and a punch. Yes. Two hits. Okay. Double slam on the one in red. I like how he's doing more damage than the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> little guys try harder. I know. <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Okay. Um, Radavan. How healthy is this one? Does he? He looks pretty he banged looks pretty up. Pretty disheveled. Right? Okay, because I'm gonna first. I'll roll for my um m my magical weapon, and it's actually gonna attack this green guy who's been like poisoning. Uh, you need a fourteen, a thirteen concentration check. Oh, I need another one. Did you take damage stuff. last? Uh, was it last round you took dagger hit? I took three damage. Right, so it's thirteen. <laughs> I know it's uh -oh. a joke, but you might roll a one. <laughs> I, don't oh, say no. that, because you, you... Don't you say that, You might roll a one, Shaggit. Gore. <laughs> That's so fucking evil, but it's true. Oh, oh my god, oh, so you get an 18 just to prove me wrong. Okay, uh, all right, so yeah, you can cast. <laughs> okay, so first I'm going to roll for my, um, my magical spiritual weapon, and it's going to attack the little dwarf that's throwing shit, because he's annoying me. All right, have him attack okay. that dude then. Yeah, no, it's it's. I just gotta go to the. Uh, and he will hit three times for twenty-five damage. And then I'm also gonna, since I passed the saving throw, thank God, I'm gonna cast Order's Wrath. Any chaotic creatures within a thirty-foot cube. Um, so it's 19 damage uh, with a willpower partial of 19, and it's just gonna go wow around here because it's all it's 30 foot. Okay, first. so you're gonna hit. Well, all of them are chaotic. So um, elementals are chaotic too. Well, they're neutral. Um, no, the all of the um, the dwarves okay. are chaotic. Are yeah. Right. Yeah. So not the, the elementals. elementals the, dwarves. the dwarves are fine. I mean, the, the, the dwarves are chaotic. The elementals are fine. Sorry. Okay, the elementals actually take half damage, and they can save as well yep. for a quarter damage. Well, let's cause... roll for them first, then. So your elementals need to make a willpower save. Um, 19. And their willpower is plus 7, so d20 plus 7. And they need 19s. Let's roll for the little one first. Okay, little one passes, so he... Or, uh, so he so takes he, 5. So he takes 5. And the big one fails. Takes 10. So the big one takes 10. All right, so attribute that damage. All right, now we need to roll for some dwarves. So um, so they will take 19 or half. Let's see. I was hoping to roll better, but it's all I can do. All right, the rogue, not... the rogue fellow um, takes half. All right, he is looking seriously worse for wear. I'll update his icon in a minute. Uh, the one in the cage with him. If he fails, he's dazed for a round. Yep. Um, he failed, so he takes 19 damage and is dazed. And the one in red passes. Yeah. And then the other one that's fighting the big giant elemental also passes. Shit. Okay. All right. Okay. So one of them was dazed by that, and they all take a smidge of damage. I'm going to move my cage real quick so that I can update this guy's damage icon to red. All right. Okay. Um, that was right Now it's the big dude. So the big giant elemental it is his turn next, Jane Ivana. Okay. 
Yeah, he is um, full-fledged trying to really hurt this guy. He's not doing great at it, but he's trying. Uh, well, that's a hit. And so is that. Two solid blows. Yes. Nice. Roll high, Jane. Two Roll blows high. upon the Oathbreaker. Uh-oh. But 42! Right. <laughs> 42. Right. This guy's got to be hurting soon, right? Oh, he is. <laughs> I, I, had, I forgot to update oh, his Oh, man. Thing. <laughs> so worried. All right. Okay. Um, all righty. Uh, Kiliana, it is your turn. Oh, wow. Me? As you cower behind Radovan. So I say, hey, Radovan, do you think a fireball inside that cage will be all right? <laughs> I, I, I just I just say well, distance distance. That's all I'm saying. I'm not I'm not giving you an answer because I don't know. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I mean, it's an invisible horse field okay. cage, but yeah, I'm not. But that gonna. does apply for in in going as well as outgoing. Right. Yeah. So you're, oh, okay, and I'm gonna back up. So um, unless you can materialize the fireball in the cage. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Over, oops. All right, moving through this gold, you can only move at about a third of your movement rate. Okay. Right? I'll just go right here. Because you're like and... wading through, like, shh, shh, shh through yeah. all, the all, all the coin and stuff. <laughs> I'm going to uh, improve to magic missile this guy. Okay. Right there. All right. All right, the balls of blueness. Ooh. Ooh. That's 15 points, so you get another 7. Um, on top of that, so 27 points as the magic missiles dart and dive around your elemental, smashing into the dwarf. Alrighty. Okay. Um, where are we at? It is their turn. Okay, the one with the daggers is going to hurl them. The first one he is hurling once again at Radovan. Well, now he has a they're, they're invisible, so can, he can't see the bars, right? No. Uh, yeah, if he hits, a... if he hits, I'm going to give him a 25 percent chance that it doesn't that it hits a bar. Okay, well, just don't hit then. <laughs> <laughs> if it hits, if it Please doesn't hit, it won't really matter, will it? Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so he throws the first dagger. That would hit. All right, and then he's throwing the second one at Kia. Not hit. And that misses. All right, so now we're going to roll a dice slash R 1D, 1D100. So if this is 25 or lower, he throws it, and you basically see it go and ricochet off of one of the invisible bars. It did not. Okay, so uh, it does hit you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, oh, he had a 75% chance. Well, yeah, the bars are this thick. The gap is that thick. Think about it. There's it's more not. gap than bar. What? Doesn't it say it in the spell? I don't know. You I'll, said I'll you wanted a the cage, hit. right? You Just can choose it. It, it says 20-foot cube with the bands are half-inch wide with half-inch gaps between them. Oh, is it half-inch with half-inch? All right, well, we'll make it a 50%, yeah. but then he still yes. went past. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but good That's to know. I'm damage. glad you pointed that Small out. Damage. So it'll be 50-50 from here on out if he tries to throw it out. Okay. But with an 84, he, he made it anyway. All right, Radovan. Yes. Um, a nick from the dagger that was apparently will not roll. Uh, oh, of course, it's, ignore, ignore the second one. The first one, he did one point of damage. Another saving throw? Yep, DC 21. Okay, okay Radovan. Don't roll one. <laughs> 32, he aced it, look. No problem. Poison is no trouble to this fellow. I'm just like, stop throwing shit at me, you fuck. <laughs> All right, the one that is in here that can't do much, um, he's pretty much just, again, violently attacking the sides, but to no avail. All right, the next one is the red fellow. Uh, I think he hit your elemental one time. Yes. Oh. Four. Twenty-four. Uh, dead. There goes the last of the small elementals. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Um, the one fighting your mega dude. 
Oh god, if this Mega 2 dies. I know. Jeez. <sighs> uh, we'll hit it three times. Mm-hmm. How much health does he have? He's got 92 right now. Okay, so he's like another round, maybe. maybe. Takes 55 <laughs> rounds. Got one more round on this game. <laughs> All right, um, and it is. There are no more little dudes, so they're gone. Radavan, you're up, buddy. Uh, I took a point of damage. Do you want me to roll the concentration sure. to cast a spell? You'd oh want me God. to roll it, wouldn't you? <laughs> like even with a fail, it's still a skill check, right? I mean, I want you to roll it. Doesn't mean you're gonna fail. Might roll a twenty, <sighs> bitch. <laughs> Alright, so that is I'm casting a very weak smell but it's a thing that I can still do from a distance, because otherwise I'm running out of options. I'm casting a sound burst. Ooh. Which I can't fucking sound find. Oh, there boom! it is. Boom! And I'm doing it right here, so it's going to hit Every all creature three in the of area them. will take five points of sonic damage. It's very weak, but they have to do a fortitude saving throw or else be stunned for a round. That's right. Okay. All right. Um, so let's do the one inside the cage, the green-haired one. Fortitude, you said, huh? Yeah, well, they're going to pass this shit. I know. They're dwarves. But I don't have any ranged spells, so 16 is the, <laughs> the rogue. Yes. The other big dude. <laughs> well, I figured this would fail, but yeah, no, sorry, no. And so my weapon is gonna try to kill that fucking rogue. All right. Who's still throwing shit and Go for it, spiritual rogue weapony thing. Uh, two solid hits. Okay, the rogue is no more. He is down. Yay! We killed one! Just As like your magical mace crushes his cranium, <laughs> leaving Go him mace. dead. Go, magical Cuthbert. Weapon of the day. <laughs> All right. Um, the big, giant, huge Whoa. elemental. He has one, potentially one more round to inflict his pain and anguish. Two okay. solid blows upon the Oath Do your Earth. damage! Not, don't give me those rolls. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Move. <laughs> okay, the solid fist slam down as the Oathbreaker does his utmost best to shield himself from the mighty blows. Um, Kia Liana, it is your turn. What do you want to do? I go, all right, Radovan, I haven't tried this one yet. You see, uh, blue, what's this? Blue rays <laughs> of fuck cold are you doing? attempt to come out of her hands. I don't know why I put it like that. And I have to do. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm I have scared. to do a uh, ranged touch Ranged attack. touch attack. Who are you aiming at? I'm aiming at this guy. Okay. All right, so range, touch, so, attack. Um, so you basically, ready? yeah, go for it. <laughs> BAB plus dex plus your 1d20. Oh, yes. yeah, I Whatever got Whatever your it. base attack bonus is, plus dex modifier, plus a d20. What Radovan just said. I just want you to get hit because I don't want this guy on me. <laughs> he scares me. <gasps> oh, a lovely roll, and it's oh a solid God. blow. Let so the roll 17D6. fly. Twin, so 17d6. It will Yay! be 67 Damn. points oh. of damage. That was fucking awesome! That's like the most damage you've ever managed to do with a spell, I believe. Um, oh my god. And I don't... Is there a save for half against that? I, let's see. No, it's a ranged touch attack. It's a, I don't think there is, is there? Um, oh, cold Let's see, Damage. Polar Ray, I'm 95% sure there is because it's a ranged touchdown. No, there is no save, as I figured. So 67 points of damage to nice. that guy. Where is he? Nice. 67. Thanks, <laughs> All right, the blast hits him. He goes flying through the air, bounces against the force of, ca of the cage force. And then kind of ricochets over here. Um, 20, 20, uh, 6. 
Okay, he actually, as he kind of hits the cage and rolls off, he stumbles and pretty much drops down to one knee, having to put one hand down to avoid himself from falling flat on his face. Hero stance? Kind of, yeah. He winces in pain and agony, as you can see that huge, big, like, blast of cold blue upon his chest. Almost like his entire chest cavity is just being covered in frost and chilled to the very bone. All right. Jesus. That was well, pretty nice, impressive. Um, nice hit. It is their turn. Okay, um, he is going to use his... Uh, he has to basically stand up. He's going to use the rest of his action to charge towards you guys. Uh, 18 saving throw for my fear aura. As he gets yep. moved in range. Yes, just like, <laughs> I'm standing there on fucking gold with a with a halo around my weapon. Passes. Oh, of course. Damn it. Sorry, sorry everyone. <laughs> All right, the other the other dwarf as he is preparing to finish off your mighty colossus. As he will hit it three okay. times. Oh no. He's got 37 health. He no. can't not kill it. <laughs> <laughs> As he, with utter glee, uh, butchers uh, the thing down okay. to the ground and it vanishes. Okay. okay as, he, was... as the last axe slams through it, as it kind of shatters, he takes a full kind of motion swing with the axe and stops now, crouched, holding the axe. <sighs> And then he just kind of raises one hand and it's like... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like a demented Babe Ruth. Like, I want to get you. Oh, run. All right, right Radovan, what do you want to do? I am finally going to get in the fray and because he's right there on my butt. And I'm going to sh shuffle over and attack. Five right. feet movement. Get in there. Get you some dwarf. Okay. <laughs> Get you a handful of beard. Um, right. You hit twice. Three, no, three times. Right. Um, 20 is just enough. All right. So uh, 29 okay. points of just damage. <laughs> okay. The last mace blow hits him upside the head. You see his eyes roll in the back of his head. He staggers for a second. And then you see the axe drop from his hand as he collapses down to the ground. Ooh. And I, my magical spiritual weapon, is going to attack the one in the cage. All right. And, and he will hit only once. Only once. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All righty. Um, there are so no elementals left, Kia. All right. So I'm going to move a little bit this way. Shh, shh, shh. Through the gold. Uh, um, yeah, and I'm going to... Blast a cone of cold at him. Okay. If I can click my character. Oops. No cones for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna a blasting get right in. <laughs> huge cone of frost comes flying out. He gets a reflex save for half. Oh, what is a 60 foot range? I thought the cone was closer. And he yeah, fails he it! Oh, he fails uh, it. That's 58 that's points of damage. Jesus. That was a Take nice it. cone. Nice cones, Jane. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got some beautiful cones. So inappropriate, but it was funny to say it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, 58. All right, okay. As he begins to get ready to run forward, you see the cone like... Hit him as he begins to stagger and fall backwards a few feet, covered from head to foot in a frosty hue. Um, one of his eyes is barely open. You can see the fatigue in his body. Okay. Um, it is his turn. Mustering everything he can. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he runs to the ladder and begins to climb. <laughs> oh, my God. Son of a bitch! Starts, ching, ching, ching. Oh, knock my head off. <laughs> Corey, 
That's how exciting it was. Oh my god. Yes, folks, I have hair. Um, so, <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, he is trying to make his escape. He's using a full turn, his action to get there, and you see him like, tee, 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 trying to stagger up there as fast as he can. Um, obviously, he is seriously injured and wounded. He's not moving particularly quickly, but he is ascending the stairwell. Um, remind me at our first break, I need to do that wheel spin for our buddy in chat as well. All right, Radovan. My, I'm going to move, use my movement action to direct my spiritual weapon to pursue him as he climbs. Okay. So it'll move to him and only get one attack, but yep. maybe it'll like knock him down or slow him further. Maybe. And maybe it'll... Uh, it hits for 12. Does it? Uh, it's not enough to end him, but it's definitely enough to slow him further. Okay. And I can't do anything else. Right, really, Kia, except heal myself. What do you want to do? I'm gonna heal myself. Sorry. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm 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 actually hurt. Yeah. You're hurt. <laughs> well, yeah. I was like at 80 health. That's why I was so afraid of them getting to me. 19. Is all he right. imbued at all yet, or is he already halfway up? Um. He is. Let's think. No, he's his legs would still be exposed because the okay. hole is at the top. The ladder goes all the way up to the hole. Okay. So he didn't get but halfway up, and it's still the same turn. So he hasn't got to move yet. So yes, he is visible. <laughs> um, cool. But he is also there is a wall of there is a cage between you and him. All right. Well, it's invisible, but yeah, it's still. It's still my turn. Or is it my turn? It yet? is Sorry. your turn, Jay. Okay, so I, I'm going to cast um, empowered magic missile. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Because <laughs> yeah. it's the only spell that can't miss. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, nicely done. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh let's see. Zero, oh, so three, the one. dice variable is pretty shitty. Three, four, oh. five, six, seven, eight, giving you plus four, which is a total of seventeen. I'm going to move my movement. Okay. Um, as the magic missiles hit the guy, um, you see his hand slip as he begins to fall backwards. He half-heartedly attempts to reach up with his other hand to grab it, um, but fails to do so. His body falls backwards and he lands on his back onto the concrete ground. You see his arms kind of like judder just for a moment. His neck begins to raise, and then his shoulders just give out as he collapses, and yes! his arms flop down, lifeless, upon Yay! the ground. Okay. Oh. Holy. Okay. Oh my God. All right. I'm the one in green, the one with the green, who's still inside the cage. He says, "This thing won't keep me in here forever. When I get out, you're dead." Oh, shut up. I'm, I'm just going to approach. I'm going to say, uh, you're not leaving there alive, dick. And I'm going to send my, my my spiritual weapon back to get an attack. Okay. And then I'm going to turn to Kia and say, kill him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, do the magic. So the spiritual weapon back. comes back for one attack because it has to move. Uh, for eight. For eight. Okay. All right. Which should put him on an orange marker anyway. We all know this damn thing's there. I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> it's in my way. I'll do this instead because this is easier. Uh, yes. Here, hang on. <laughs> it's not as pretty, but it'll work. There. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, you want to do something, Kia? Well, um, I, I guess, yes, I will do that. It says all spells can pass through the gaps. Okay, cool. Yep. Then, yeah, I'm going to, um, from here, just try another, um, polar ray. Okay. To see if I can, you Polarize know. Him. <laughs> blast him. Uh, that's a hit. Oh goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do it again, Radovan. Sorceress. 
Ah! Oh yeah, he's done. Okay. All right. Finally, the it. last of these wretched dwarves bites the dust. <gasps> um, it oh, is a bittersweet shit. victory. You have Beecham has escaped with whatever it was that he come here with the intent to steal. Um, you know that your friend Marlo lays deceased somewhere on the halls above. Well, you know where. Um, well, the dwarves are all destroyed. I'm going to turn to Radovan and just walk up to him. Don't look him. <laughs> A little aghast. I'm just going to give a nod and go to each of the bodies and really just bash their heads in. Okay. Like, I don't, you, you, you're, just... In other words, you are making sure that they have no chance of, you know, coming yeah, back I, for one I, more I'm... stab at thee. <laughs> and then I'm, then I'm just going to, like, hit the wall and sink, slink down. And... You did good, Kia. Stand back up, Radovan. I'm going to get to my feet. I'm very. I'm breathing heavily. I'm not tired from like physical exertion, but <laughs> casting all those spells, almost right. done with all the spells I cast. I'm. We, we get, need a diamond. <laughs> we get a diamond. We get enough to hopefully pay off the Jarl. We bring Marlo back if Cuthbert willing, if she wants to. And then I guess. We tell the we tell the dwarves what happened here. We tell them about this place. And I'm gonna go and start helping her look. All right. So you're hunting for a diamond worth a hundred gold. Uh, sorry, ten thousand gold 10, pieces. And also, we're trying to find the smallest pieces that look like they're worth the most, so we can, you know. Right, so like you're a... looking for? Uh, okay, give me the praise checks, then, guys. Praisal checks. Huh. Hey. Uh, Really? Yeah. yeah Radovan really sucks well. at appraisal, but he actually did really well. Okay, Kia. Oh, I, 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 okay. In there. As Kia takes all the clearest, shiniest looking pieces <laughs> of glass she could find. Um, <laughs> I'm also looking for new rubies. <laughs> yeah, rubies that you can take and crush. Um, yes. <laughs> alrighty. Let me make a dice check here. Oh, that was... Oh, okay. All right. Um, so you root through, um, it takes you a good while, um, but finally, yes, Radovan, in this massive collection of loot, I mean, if you guys are just pushing through it all, you know, mm -hmm. looking specifically for a diamond, eventually, um, all right, it takes you almost an hour and a half of frivolous searching, oh, just man. pushing stuff through. But eventually, Radovan, you do find a huge, impressive diamond that you believe is worthy of an offering to St. Cuthbert for such a task. And, and also, we're going to be looking for other things to fill up our packs to the 25,000 gold, right? I mean, worth in items. Right. So do we have to roll separately for that? Um, no, I mean, if you if that's your intent, uh, it's not hard to grab like we, treasury We obviously don't want to take that you much in. more than that, but we want to make sure we feel confident that we've hit that. So how much mark. are you taking? Because the other day you were saying you didn't want to take more than your favorite, than what was owed. Well, I don't know. probably just going for. as much as we can carry, hoping it's enough. Hoping it's more yeah, than I'm, that. I'm shooting for 25,000. That's yeah. carryable, that we can... Share between it's us. It's easily carryable if you take it in like gemstones and as opposed to gold and platinum. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's, that's what, what we're doing. doing. Um you I mean you made a good appraisal roll, so you can get a good idea of getting close to that. How much my my question to you is when you get there, are you stopping? Yes. Or okay. So you're not gonna yeah. take more than what you believe to be the twenty five thousand. Correct. Obviously, maybe pat it a little bit to be sure in case you're slightly off or whatever, but... Right, yeah. 25,001 <laughs> gold pieces in value. Well, you know, the exact value of a ruby or a gem is kind of hard That's to hard. pinpoint down to a single go. Oh, uh -oh. Just lost. Spook just died And the other the thing Kia was doing... Um, Power flickered. ...was casting yeah. magic, detect magic, to see if there was anything magical. Um... 
Okie dokie. Um, that's going to kind of have to be a thing that you do. What's the... I mean... You, you can't detect magic the entire pile of gold in one foul swoop. It's There's way too much of it and too thick. Um, I would probably gather up some of the cool weapons I saw in... Okay. So you're going to... Okay, it. there you go. So anything that looks yeah. potentially... Yeah. All right. Amulet or... All right, Kia. Oh, shit, uh, we'll leave this on you. Give me a... D uh, roll a D8. <laughs> D8. That's a spook. Here's that the sucks. D8. Yeah, um... Three. All right, yeah, you do manage to find three weapons, uh, a sword, an axe, um, and a, a hammer that all appear to radiate magic. Um, we're going to go ahead and take our break right now, and hopefully Spook will get okay. back to us before then. Um, that way we can thank our flickered. kind donors <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, her pa power flickered, so hopefully she'll be back on in just a second. But we're going to use this opportunity to go and take a quick break. Okay, um, so... Yeah, what do you guys want to do? Let me pull back the dice cover as well, mm. I suppose. Uh, so we found the diamond. Okay, so yes, you have a diamond and you okay. stuff your pockets with what you deem to be about 25,000-ish golds. Give a little, give it a little padding. Um, and yeah, Kia, there's a magical sword, a magical mace. Uh, sorry, a magical sword, a magical ha axe, and a magical hammer that you find. You don't know what they're magical, okay. but they definitely radiated magic under detect magic. Okay. I'm going to write that down. So you're going to take those? I don't know yet. Um, I don't want to like weigh myself down with them if we're trying to bring on this, all these gems. So I'm going to turn to Radovan and say, hey, do you think we have any use for these? Uh, they're magical. I don't need any of them. Do you have an idea to use any of them? I guess not. I just, you know, Marlo when I see magic, I get excited about it. So I'm going to, like, toss them behind me. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> like they're throw nothing. them back into the... <laughs> and thus the axe of Dwarvish Lords was lost forever. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need it. A small gangly creature comes out, picks it up, and goes, my precious, and skulks <laughs> off with it. Uh, and the Cute. world was destroyed forever because Kia failed to take the axe of might. Okay, we just, um, we just need to get out of here, seal this vault, hope that the defenses reactivate so no one else can, you know, like those lizard, those Jordan things up there. All right. Uh, okay, so who's going up the uh, hole first? I will. That was very brave of you and very <laughs> resounding. Let me go ahead and position this properly before you do so that chat sees everything that they need to see. <laughs> no, we're not done yet, Kia. Um, Alright, okay. So Radovan emerges from the massive hole comes up the ladder okay so rather than yeah you get to the top of the ladder and as you do so you can see f a small group of scaly individuals poking around in this room like looking as if they're curious at what's going on uh, um, I don't s oh I see okay you have to God, find the a room huge first map. oh it's, it's a, a huge massive map, map. yeah Alright, um, so yeah, you do that, um... Uh, make a dice roll for them. Oh, that didn't work. Alrighty. Okay, so you kind of like tch, 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 emerge from the top. You see them all kind of looking. And then as you kind of stop and see, oh crap, there's these guys. One of them is like, stops and looks and says something in a language you don't understand very loudly. Kia, from above the tunnel, you hear the faint shouting of somebody speaking draconic say, 
That one! They're down there! <laughs> oh, Alright, what are you doing, Radavan, <laughs> upon seeing that? Um, well, is, was Kia climbing behind me? Probably. Yeah. And this lid is up, right? Yes. So, with the ladder. So I would I would climb out and immediately get behind the lid. Like, the, the green jade river is not acid, right? Uh, not currently, no. But I, I would get out there and, like, say, Kia, quickly! Okay, so you're gonna climb out and rush over there. Alright. Um, well, as you climb out, then we're going to need initiatives because they're not oh going to just stand there and watch you. <sighs> Dang it. Oh, that sucks. Oh. Oh! Ooh. Wow. And they still go for, for me. Because <laughs> you rolled so badly and I rolled badly. Wow. As well. <laughs> and Kia. Kia normally will go first, but of course she's got to get out of the thing. All right, so Radovan, as you emerge from the top of the tunnel, um, seeing you, they are going to react. This one is going to bolt forward to here. He's smart enough to walk around that. All right, the first two getting to you. Uh, the first they, one, uh, breath weapon, cone of cold. Okay. Um, let's see. And you can save reflex save for half. We'll hit for 12. Reflex save to avoid half of it. Yep, yep. What you do, so you only take six, and the second one. Reflex again. Yep, uh, we'll do 14, unless you reflex save for half. Which you do, so um, you take six and seven, 13 points of cold damage from these first two. All right. All right, okay, so Kia, yeah, you can hear like. You see Radovan jump out and rush to the back. As you can see shadows like dancing on the ceiling of the chamber above of multiple okay. individuals. Okay. Um, in that case, for for my turn... Uh, er, I'm putting you on the map, but you're still in the... So I didn't get first No, because you, you were behind Radovan, so you couldn't have acted if you wanted to. Okay. Well, I mean, it depends what you want to do. I mean, if you want to just... Was, I was going to cast um, Overland Flight and just float up all the way to the top, like, above, like, on uh, okay. the Okay, you ceiling. could do that, because there's plenty of room to get yeah, past Yeah, so Radovan. you'll just see me, like, go... And then, like, go up. <laughs> okay, so like, all right. So you zoom up to the top. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, that sounds fair enough to me. Um, so Redavan went, they did what they could do, Shit. so, um, it starts, so Kia, that was your turn, you went up, so, okay, so Kia, you start technically at the top of the round, what do you want to do? Okay, how high is the ceiling? Just wondering how high uh, In this room, it's about 20 feet tall, it's a huge chamber. Okay, then I am, well, okay, so since I zoomed up and I saw them, uh -huh. before I go up all the way, I cast Cone of Cold since they're kind of all in a line. <laughs> and then uh, well, finish that's, my move. Well, that's assuming nope. you flew up, stopped, realigned yourself. I mean, I not to be that guy, but you did say you were going to come out and just fly okay, straight right. to the ceiling, right? So if I'm already up there, then So you would have gone straight up the middle. Bit. So you would be kind of here. Okay. That doesn't mean you can't move over and move down and reposition yourselves, but based on what you, kind of the way you described it, be a little kind of retconning to... Yeah, okay, so I fly up, and then half of my movement is coming back down, like, oh, they're all in a line! And, um... Where am I? Okay, there I am. So I'm gonna go down about towards the ground for, like, half of my motion movement. Okay. 
Um, and I'm going to cast not, not Cone of Cold. I'm going to do Burning Hands. All right. Um, the range on Burning Hands, do you have it? So I have to measure it out? Yes, it should be 15 feet. So I might get some of them. I'll catch the first three. Oh, shit, that sucks. Uh, okay. 14 <laughs> points of damage. One they spell? can try to make a reflex save for half. Oh, and then I'm going to use the rest of my movement to fly back um, that's up. That's a fail. They failed? Uh, all of them failed. So at least, yeah, you did 14 points of damage to the first three. Okay. So I'll fly back up 15 more feet. And uh, be like, Radovan, watch out! <laughs> All right, okay. Um, their turn. All right, the remaining three are going to advance and do the same thing. Um, they're going to cold blast Radovan. First one will be a pff, five. Hmm. Save for half, <laughs> if you want to bother. <laughs> of course I want to bother. I don't want to die. I'm no, you don't. So take one. five damage. Second one uh, will do seven. Fail. Okay, so it's a total of 13. And the last one will... Oh, ignore that. That's the wrong dice roll. Uh, oh, fit thirteen. Thanks. And but that is a pass. So thirteen was down. So that's Take seven. Half. Yep. So fourteen, nineteen damage. Nineteen Jesus. points of cold blast damage from them. Okay, the two that had already done so are going to try to melee attack. Twenty-two is my AC. Yep. Just oh, for right. for chat's purposes. And both miss. Oh, thank you. Thank the, thank the Cuthberts. Okay. Um, Radovan, you may retaliate, sir. I am a full attack on either one of them. Just trying to knock them down. All right. Um, we'll start at this end. Yeah, he's easy to annihilate. You crush, cripple, and maim him to submission. Kia. Okay. From above, I'm going to... Do an empowered magic missile on, on any of them. The one right, the one, one directly, directly in front, in front of, of Radovan. Radovan. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yes. Um, and I can say, watch out! <laughs> and that will do, let's see, 13 to plus 7. Uh, that is enough to finish that one off. He is destroyed by your balls of blue light. Okay. Um, their turn. Rushing in around Radovan. Bring it, bitches! Alrighty. First one. Second one. Third one. Miss, miss, they and all miss. miss their mark. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, Cuthbert is with thee. Radovan, it is your turn. Uh, full attack on any one of them. I don't care. I just want to kill them. All right. So all all that I can do will be on each one. All righty. So that is twenty eight <laughs> points of damage, bringing that one almost to death. All right, Kia. I can't tell how many are left. Is um, it just three of them? Oh, one that's green, one that's them. unscathed, and one that is seriously injured. Oh, that one's. I didn't know that was been behind me. Oh, okay. Well, that makes okay, sense. Okay, the one behind Radovan. Jesus, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a green one. I only the see the one two. behind Radovan. Okay. I'll be doing a normal magic. Normal magic missile, missile attack for eleven. All right. Four ones. <laughs> Isn't that special? That's lovely. All right, it's their turn. Three more attacks for Radovan. Ooh, that is Ooh. And it's a crit, so it's two Ooh. hits. And a possible crit. And oh. a possible crit. Oh. And it is. Wait, isn't your armor 24? 
It's 22. 22. My 22 now? Protection yep. from evil. Oh, wait. The holy sword. How long does that last? I mean, it's still a hit, but... Yep. If it's an evil creature, I take less damage, don't I? Or... Um, don't know. Do you? Pull it up. Ooh. Well, I mean, if not, I'll just take. I'll just eat all of it. But yeah, but yeah. tell me, it's, okay. it could be important. <laughs> Where are you? Hold on. Sorry. Oh, I think I know where it is. I think I closed that because I would cast all my spells from that school. That yeah, that's all right. So it's Let's magic see. circled against evil. Uh, these are evil. protection from evil. The spell wards a creature from attacks by evil creatures, from mental control, and from summon creatures or creates a me- The subject gains plus two deflection bonus. It's one minute per level, so it would be 17 minutes. So we, it's long It's expired. long gone, yeah. Because you were searching for 88 minutes yeah. down there. Yeah. All right, so in that case, then, enjoy the damage of 32 points. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm hurting. Okay. All righty. Um, Radovan, how do you wish to re- how do you wish to retaliate? Um, forty-two casting so, spell concentration. No, I'm not, I'm not casting any spells. Um, first two attacks on the or red guy in front in front of me, and then the last one on the guy behind me, if that's possible. Like I can spin around and do my final. Uh, you can hit the one next to him, but not really the one behind you. But not the one behind. No. Okay, so two on the red, one on the not hurt. I guess. Okay. All right, the first two drops, so this guy is now deceased. And you hit the guy next to you for nine points of damage. All right, Kia, what you got in you? All right, uh, from above, I attempt to do Scorching Ray, which would Wait. require three different touch attacks for three different rays. Um, you may fire one ray plus one additional ray for every four levels beyond the third. Each ray requires a ranged touch attack to hit. Okay, um, so what's the first one going at? First one I mean, they all kind of go at once, so you got to yeah. call them ahead of time. Okay, I'm going to do two on the guy behind Radovan. Okay. And one on that guy. All right, all right. Let's do the one behind Radovan first. So right. two range touch attacks, D20 plus BAB plus con bonus. Uh, that's a miss. Oh. Second one. That's oh, a miss. Oh, shit. Third one <laughs> is a hit. All right, so you hit this okay, guy. Okay, 46. Gosh. Uh, oh. All right, well, that's definitely singed and burnt him somewhat, mm. but he is still alive. Shoot. Okay. Gordon's alive. Um, well, two Ra- more attacks. R- Rado's hurt, but he's still alive himself. So. All right. Well, two attacks on Radovan again. Shit. A hit. One hit. Uh, first one's a hit. Yeah. Woo. As he Stay strikes alive. Radovan for a further twelve Shit. points of damage. He's a little less in good shape, but he's <laughs> still alive. I mean, Radovan's a healthy motherfucker. He's a he big dude. Up, so. You keep saying he's still alive. Just keep rubbing it in over there. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't make me throw my, this diamond down that hole. Because <laughs> I will, Marlo. All right. One of the yeah, one of these draconic guys is going to swallow it and then throw himself into a burning ab- abyss somewhere just out of spite. I'm, I'm going to just do a All full right, attack. Um, yeah, right event. On this, on the guy in front of me. Full attack. And full attack. Right. I just want to make sure he goes down. Um, well, the only one that hit was the last one, but it was still enough to put him down. And I'm turning. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kia, you got one left facing Radovan, the one that's been behind him the entire time, just thumping away. I know. <laughs> been behind Radovan. Pound, pound, pound. Yeah. I'm <laughs> seeing Radovan pretty hurt, so I use my last empowered magic missile on this guy. All right. The last one. Uh, All righty. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Give me a six-point bonus for twenty-three. He is done. Yes. All right. You end the last of these guys. Okay. So all of the little draconic dudes that were waiting in the wings for 
seemingly like for you guys to come back up are deceased. Radovan. Where do you want to go now? How do you feel about just dimension dooring with me over to where Marlo is? Can you I do that safely? Like, yes, I know. Knowing I know exactly where you where need she to is. go. I just need to know in my mind where it is. And... Well, first I'm gonna I'm gonna close this trap. Okay, so yeah. Does it? Do I hear any clinks or clatters or? No. I'm not cursing. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over here. And I'm actually going to heal myself because I'm really hurt. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to take any more damage from things. <laughs> Gore, I'm scared, okay? Don't kill me. I'm scared, too. <laughs> like, for fuck's sake, man. You, you keep throwing shit at me. Um, hey, y'all came this far and then wandered down there and made a hell of a noise. Did you really think that none of the guys in here would come in out of curiosity to see what was going on? <laughs> I'm doing two critical <laughs> wounds on myself because that's how hurt I was. So. Wow. Okay, so you do yourself for 37 and 32 damage, so you... 67... 69 points of damage you do yourself. Hey, yo. Okay, because I was at 26, so... Oh, you're healing them. I thought you said you were doing <laughs> cure, cure critical wounds. Uh, you were doing critical wounds on yourself. I am. Okay, that's... Wait, wait, what? You said I'm going to do critical wounds to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I can't. I, I'm, I'm a good Cuthbert Priest. Goer. I know. I was just, it was just funny. Um, it's all right. Funny. Um, and then I'm going to turn and I'm going to touch the rod that Beecham had down his pants and touch this magic sigil to see if things reposition. All right. Yes, they do. Um, <laughs> as that happens, you do hear the mighty locks of the huge dwarven um, cash. <laughs> go back into place. Perfect. I'm going to stick that rod down my pants. Oh, yeah. You know where that's been? <laughs> True. For many days. <laughs> many months has been down there. <laughs> I'm going to look at Kia and say, look, if you can safely get us to where Marlo is, I need to rest, however. I mean, I'm in no position to try to appeal to Cuthbert's. Right. But... Well... I mean, my dimension door can do... The range is 400 feet plus 40 feet per level. Which is... Math. 680 plus 400. So I think that is... That's 1,080 feet. Um, Alright, so, you try it? <laughs> it was like this I way, get right? that thing out of there. You can't measure through rock. You got no way of knowing how far so that is. So it says if you can uh, dimension door <laughs> within range. Who knows if we're in range? I guess Kate would have a better idea. But you just imagine, simply visualize the area, and you um, whether uh, you will always arrive at the exact spot desired. It says if you're in yeah, range. as long as you're within range. <laughs> so we'll see what happens, and you go well. If you kill me now with this spell, Jane. I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna laugh too. <laughs> yeah, I can. I gotta know. <laughs> I already knew anyway. Yeah, you were in range. <laughs> I just found it funny that suddenly. Kia has a mystical tape measure to measure the distance nope, that, through the rock. That was me. That wasn't that. Jane. That was totally me. <laughs> oh, was it you, you cheating bastard? Right, okay. Um, I should make it fail just because. Right. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go ahead and move you. Curious, how many feet was it? Oh, nowhere near that much. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. We always use Dimension Door like for really short distance. I know. No, you never actually bother to go any real distance. All right, so yeah, you you vanish uh, and translocate yourself to the Dwarven Chamber where you have Marlo stacked <gasps> beneath the table. Do you think we'll be safe here? Well, so they don't come get, up the stairs. You are gonna let me rest. You so. gonna rest? In, you wanna rest in here? I mean, if what do we you can... mean I'm going to let you? Well, I know you're spent on spells as well, but 
I need my eight hours, so <sighs> can you go with what you have and just keep an eye out, or maybe Cal can? I'm gonna try to get four. I'll see if Cal will stay up. <laughs> I'm gonna turn to Cal and be like, "Hey, buddy, you've been resting in there a while." <laughs> Yeah, fuck you. You got four yeah. hours of watch on you? <laughs> I'm going to bed. Uh, he kind of looks so at you and he you. says, Yeah, I'll, I'll watch from the corner of the room from under that table and make a noise if anything comes Fine. up that stairs, but I'm not going to... better be a loud noise. <laughs> so I wake he up... He said, Yeah, it'll probably sound like me screaming in agony as I'm almost killed by a massive rock. <laughs> probably sound exactly like that, Kia. <laughs> Good night, Cal. Just do your job, Bill. Good night, Cal. Cat. I'm just gonna All ignore right. it. Okay, so you guys want to rest in here, then, huh? Yes, that's the intention. All right. Well, then I am gonna make a quick surveillance of here and see what did you. Oh yeah. One, two, three, four. All right. I'm gonna say that's a fairly high percentage. Um. Well, considering you bypass an awful lot of these things in the tunnel just down below without killing them and just, like, left them there, um, <laughs> I'm going to say it's a 50-50 shot that one of them is going to come up here within eight hours. I thought they never come up these stairs. No, no, Ooh. they never go past the entranceway here. They never go down the mine shaft where the mine is. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but also, they know that someone has been down here murdering all their friends, so the f logic that they might actually <laughs> look to see who did it is probably feasible. Well, we're tucked away in this corner. Yeah. You're in the Can corner. I do a fortitude save to see if I don't snore? Because <laughs> 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 maybe they'll just walk by and be like, okay. Right. Yep. And, uh,. <laughs> yeah, basically, but all of these guys up here that are all still alive, the, it's it's a clear path all the way down to here, so they're smart, they're sensible, they're going to find their dead friends scattered everywhere, they're gonna look, it's only logical that they would do. So, under a 50, and you luck out, over a 50, that are come looking for you. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why did, why did we do it this way? We're dumb. Over Damn 50. It. Yep, they're coming. Alright, um, the next question is D8, how many hours? Please. Five hours into yes! your rest. Okay, awesome. Um. <laughs> I'm happy. Well, you still didn't get eight hours. Well, I got four. That's enough for Kia. That's enough for you to sleep. You still have to have your rest time for re re getting all your spells and stuff back, right? Four hours for Kia, right? That's what I've, we've always done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for you. Yeah, Radovan doesn't have them. Cool. Well, just let me just kill them all, Kia, and I'll sleep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you won't wake <laughs> up to that, right? All right. I totally um, would. And then all gonna come. We're just gonna do these two. All right. Okay. So yeah, about five hours in, a couple of them emerge. Um, so Kia, by now, you are already awake, and so you'll actually see them emerge at the top of the stairs. But do they see us? Well, the question is, it depends. What is Kia doing as soon as she sees them? Um, when I see them, I'm going to stay where I am and not move or breathe unless they turn and look at me to where I will have a spell prepared. Okay, so you are casting a spell, which means you are moving unless it's something you can do without... Somatic. No, I'm staying still unless they look at me, basically. Okay, so you're not preparing a spell. Oh, does preparing a spell involve this? <laughs> well, you're hold yeah, you're yeah, you've gotta you you you've, you've gotta cast the spell and then hold the magic ready to cast. Oh, Otherwise you still how, have the casting how magic time. Works. <laughs> right, well I'll do a still spell. I don't know how magic works. Spell. I'm only a seventeenth level sorceress after all. I'll do my feet still spell for if they do. So okay. All right. I still um, well, yeah, you're stuff. you're in the corner by a huge table, and they see in the dark, so they're going to see you. Yes. Okay. Um, so as soon as you realize their eyes are upon you, and they've, he, the front one nudges this guy, and they rush start to run in your direction. Uh, oh. you can make an initiative check. Oh, my spell didn't go off. She did a still spell. Oh, okay. Her all right. That's yeah. 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 
then fair enough, yes. <laughs> and what spell did you cast? Oh, Chain Lightning. All right, so you're going to cast Chain Lightning on them. Um, yeah. Then they're dead. I'm not even going to waste oh, my time really? with it. <laughs> Can I roll? <laughs> sure, roll it. But I I mean, you might roll absolutely crap. So, it. But um, <laughs> if they save... Well, no, if they save... I think they you should have just you should have just took it Kia because um, <laughs> um so save for half reflex save I love um, uh, so yeah. he doesn't um so he dies but the other one only takes 28 points of damage which means he's still alive okay oh god damn it surprise I'm sure Ranavan might wake up to that I heard fucking lightning go off yeah, and, go <laughs> and screaming all right. Um, okay, initiative, Kia. <laughs> sure. Go. Uh, he's gonna. Oh, Yay! Uh, yep, I'm Kia, still... you get to go first. Okay, so you zap him. He sees you. He starts to motion towards you, um, but you and will I get go... your spell off first. What you doing? I go not today, bro. And I do a powered magic missile. And finish him off. Okay, he's dead. So uh, you just see me in the corner, like bright eyed, like wide eyed. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Redman, I didn't mean to wake you. Not today, bro. <laughs> not, not today, bro. He's come back. It's the first California gonna, elf. <laughs> I'm just gonna look and say, we're probably we probably should have just left this cave, but fuck it. And I'm gonna try to go back to sleep. I mean, it's gonna be difficult, but. <laughs> Radovan, I don't. I'm sure there's more. But I haven't rested yet. I mean, we... How many more hours do you need? I don't know how many hours passed. I was Five. asleep. Well, then you know how many more. I mean, I just do that. <laughs> I'm just tired. Three more? Fine, I'll stay awake the rest of the time. Alright. So I'm going to try to go back to sleep. I'm going to keep guard. Um, wait, I was going to... Um, I'm going to prepare grease. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to prepare to cast Grease if I see anybody come through. That's all. <laughs> this is not going to work, is it? More. Alright, yep. Come. It's not that much longer before a couple more. Um, in fact, it's, it's less than five minutes before two more come <laughs> running up here after I'm hearing the screaming awake. and the lightning blasts and Grease. stuff echoing down the hall. Alright. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, go ahead and pop Grease up. I know it's a <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, because it's the word, Jane. It's fun. It's fun. There, there's the grease. <laughs> All right. Well, power save negate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they negate it. <laughs> they negate it. Okay. So they ice skate through your grease spell. All right. All right. Um. Yep. Go ahead and give me initiative check then. Radovan, you get up. I, I guess I'm getting up because this is just not working. <laughs> oh, bitch. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Radovan with a 17, Kia with a 10. <sighs> what do I want to cast? <laughs> All these delicious spells, and they're going there. Okay. All right, Radovan, what are you going to do? So Kia nudges you awake and you can see two more of these draconic fellows uh, at the top of the stairs making their way rushingly towards you. Uh, I'm going to use my move action to get up. Okay. And then I'm just going to, I guess, wait because I can't attack from here and I don't have any fucking spells. Alrighty. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, then they rush straight up to Kia. Mm -hmm. um, and try to beat the bejesus out of her. Uh, one one misses, one hits. Uh, Alright, Kia, he smacks you with his sword for ten points of damage. Right, how? How many points are you on? Did Radovan heal you before he went to sleep? I was still at pretty You were still much pretty healthy, full, right? Almost full, so yeah. I'm at 50 now. Did he? Or 48, sorry. Tis but a scratch then. Um, okay. Do they really want to play this game? Apparently so. Whose turn is it? Um, it would be Kia's. 
Okay. This uh... Oh, it took ten. Well, I know they're... Yeah. So, <sighs> a concentration check of twenty or higher, that's not too hard for you. Yeah, I'll attempt to do concentration check. Twenty or higher, huh? Whenever you say that's not too hard for you is when it goes south. That's why I say it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. see, you made it. <laughs> that's funny. Right, what's just, your casting? <laughs> oh, I was gonna cast. I was just gonna cast a cone of cold on them. I know they're kind of immune to coldish, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, so I just like release the cold on my fingertips. I, uh, well, that's, let's see, if they fail the reflex save, <clears throat> ah. um, so they both passed, um, so they take half, and then they take half again, so 31, ah. so they actually only take 15, Waste. 16 okay. damage apiece, so they're both still alive. Goobers. <laughs> um. Radavan, we need to just leave this dumb place. Well, you need to stop casting ice spells at ice creatures. I don't want to blow up this cave. Um, Radavan, it's your turn. I'm going to do a full attack on the one <laughs> right in front of me. Alrighty, you hit him twice for... With that on top of the frost damage, he's dead. You crush his skull and leave him in a crumbled heap upon the floor. All right, this one is going to cast his breath weapon. At, um, basically, it'll hit both of you. Uh, you can both sure. save 15 DC for half. 15 DC. Uh, Radovan passes, so you only take uh, half of that. It does not, so you take 15. I mean, uh, 13. So Radovan takes 7, Kia takes 13 from the Frost Blast. Okay. But yes, I agree with you. We need to get the hell out of here. Alright, um, Kia, you're up. Alright, um, just one guy left. Uh-huh. Just that one guy left, so, yep. um... 23 concentration so check save. if you want to cast. Oh, yeah. forgot. Yes. <clears throat> Actually, no, I'm just going to do a, um... Burning hands from my staff at him. So that'll be 14 points of oh, damage. Uh, reflex save for half. And he fails miserably. Yay. So, yes, that will finish him off. Alright, so yes, he is dead as well. He All deleted right. from existence. Yeah, yeah so incinerated. <laughs> hey. Cursing to high heavens, I'm gonna reach under, extrapolate Marlo, and throw her over my shoulder and say, We're getting out of here. Thank you. Alright, so you pull her Okay, you're out of it. <laughs> So you're gonna basically pull the pull the blanket that you piled up in the inch uh, you know, yep. from out from there, grab her, throw her over your shoulder and, and we're, we're making our way out. All right. right. Okay. Uh, well, um, we're not going to really worry too much about anything until you guys get to a certain spot. So let me go ahead and gather you up. Oh, the uh, yeah. Um, I would like to. Uh... Oh, it doesn't drag like that. Give me a second here. Oh, where'd I pick him up from? Let's see. All right. So yeah, eventually you clamber back to here with all the big, giant, dead, wormy things. Giant wormy things. Oh yeah. I... All the dead remores are in the. Oh, there we corridor. are. Okay. So. And then you have that big, um, <laughs> you know. I'm going to cast Overland Flight on myself and okay. on Radovan. Okay. And I'm going to say, do you think we can both carry Marlo as we're just flying over this thing? 
Uh, depends Together? on what the weight allowance is. She's okay. not that heavy. <laughs> okay. Then I have a feeling we might be able to do it. Okay. Let's see. Oh, oh it's a personal. It. You can't make me oh, fly. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. I'll make me um, fly. So 30 feet in wearing medium or heavy armor if carrying medium or heavy low that. with average medium. Um, what's your strength? Uh, my strength is 13. 13. Um, then you cannot carry Marlo, no. Okay. It's too heavy for me. So you can fly across. All right. I'll just cast on myself. I'm like, all right. How do we get Marlo here? Um... Well, I mean, you could just dimension door, dimension door, right? I mean, that's the easiest thing to do, for sure. It's a usage, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> I just want to get out of this cave and get Marlo alive, so she can do her yes. swimming awesomeness, right? Yes, I'll fly back that way. Like, all right. Okay. Um, level four. Okay, I'm gonna dimension door her across. All right, so you're going to dimension. Is that that's what you're going to do? Is basically use dimension door to get them across, and then yes. fly the rest of the way yourself. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, well, eventually, you will find yourself after trek trekking back all the way through the caverns, um, over the dead corpses of giants. And eventually. You find yourself back at the entrance to the tunnel where you can see daylight shining out from the other side once more. I'm not sure I'm ready for that cold again. I'm feeling it right now already. Alright, well, let's, <laughs> let's do it. Alrighty. Where would you like to try to revive Mar Marlo after you get some rest? Somewhere that we won't we get disturbed. <laughs> okay. Can we let's... go back to the last place we camped out? Sure, uh, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, okay. So lugging Marlo, we're going to walk back to the last place we camped. Okay, um, which was where? I don't even remember now. I don't remember either. Oh. But it's, we're just going to go down the path away from this opening okay. in case some frost giants decide to come out. And oh, then we're going to try to find a place that has like crevices or some... Oh, I know protective... where it was. It was here. This is where you camped. Oh, at the other site, right? Oh, no, we walked quite right by that. Mm. There. There, yes. We're going to try to camp. We're going to set up a camp underneath this formation for sure. Okay. And I'm going to ask, do you have any heals left before you uh, try to sleep again? Honestly, a couple lights, but nothing really. I mean. Could I just have a light, maybe? <laughs> if it pleases. All right, for you and for me. All right, so okay. Kia gets 11, Rado gets 7. Little, little mini bump on the heal. Okay. All right, and then you're going to rest up here. I'm going to try. Yes. All right. Yes, um, keeps up, keep okay, yeah, out. Now you're outside and you're back up Yay. here and you're under here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now you're not surrounded by denizens that are just seeking to find you and kill you. Um, all right, yeah, you managed to get your rest. So so there are actually two spells I'm going to ask for, for Cuthbert, both of which probably require some justification. Right. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to ask for the second one unless the first one works, um, which is the resurrection. Okay. When I ask for new spells. Um, I'm going to ask for everything that I, I know he will probably gift me with except resurrection and the other spell, which hopefully after the resurrection, if it works. So... I guess I should justify it, Gore. You uh, probably well, want me you, to. Yeah. So, what do you? What spell are you trying to cast? 
I'm, well, I'm trying to ask for a resurrection. I'm going to be like Cuthbert. Right. Well, that's all the... part of the casting, isn't it? So it's like, you know, right. it'll either you cast the spell, you say your reasoning and your justification as you cast the spell, and it either works or it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> and either Marlo says yes, because she right. might just not want to come back, right? No, I mean, so basically, yeah. So it works like Ray's dead, except. Um, if she comes back, she doesn't lose a life. She's back to full strength, basically. Okay, so... And so the I, condition of her body is not a factor. Whereas in the other spell, it totally is. So I'm going to actually um, cast Bless Water, or Holy Water. Um, which I'm also going to prepare instead of the actual Bless spell. In preparation like for the ritual like itself. The before I ask and that cast it. Resub. Hi. Appreciate you for hitting you. that um, very much. Take a pants Much off. kindness and... Oh, it's actually a new sub, not a resub. Yes. Appreciate that, oh, buddy. Thank you. Um, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the show, bud. And, uh, yep, everybody, go ahead. You know what to do. Take your pants off and hit the hype. All right. So I'm going to lay Marlo on the snowy grounds. With okay. her hands like she's a corpse, you know, because she is a corpse. You know, she's corpsified. Um, I'm going to look to Kia and give a nod. And then I'm going to close my eyes and put the diamonds, like, on her chest, I guess. The huge the, diamond? The huge right. diamond. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close my eyes and I'm basically, you, uh, Kia, you're going to hear me say, Cuthbert, this is the second time in my life I've had to ask for a favor such as this. Okay, I you, know. you have read the resurrection spell properly, right? Yes, I have. I mean, yeah, go or... Okay. I mean, it's a pr it's, this is a whole process thing, so I'm... Yeah. Keep going, I want to hear what you say. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything, right? <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. Of course, of course, trying to scare you. <laughs> no, yeah, he's, he's throwing me. He's... No, I, I'm making sure that you know what the third line of the spell does say, because you said something last week that wasn't actually quite right. The spell can no longer than ten years per caster level. The body, right? But then underneath that, right? Upon completion of the spell. Yeah. This is. Oh. Oh. Well, what the fuck, man? I thought it would be different than Ray's dead. Uh, it's different in the fact that the body can be completely decomposed, and when she comes back, she has like lots of hit points and stuff. I thought that was, I honestly thought that was like true resurrection because there's no body. No. What's happening? Well, there's a level loss associated with it. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> he was thinking that it didn't well, have a level loss. How, 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 is, how is Resurrection different from Raised Dead? I mean, Raised Dead's weaker and it has a level loss associated as well. Uh, because Raised Dead, oh, the body has to be like within a decent condition within a certain period of time. And Resurrection, but true Resurrection, you don't need a body. It's just from wherever. Right. Which is why I thought Resurrection would be kind of like the middle ground. It is the middle, well, it's the middle ground in the fact that you do still lose a level through resurrection. I'm sorry, Spook. I honestly didn't know that. Well, maybe well, it now you change you're anything, like, no. but. Well, she might really not want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Spook. I'm sorry, Spook. Yep. Well, fuck it. I'm trying it anyway. But I, I see what you're saying, Gore. Okay. Yeah, that's why I wanted to make sure you understood that. Cause I, didn't well, I mean, I'm you... not going to not do it just because. No, I, you know, I know, I know. But, um,. You know, I mean, it's really up to Spook because now she might yeah. be like Fuck this. Um, yeah, again, a, a level is just something you can regain no matter what. It can always be reacquired. I know. So, it's... <laughs> but it, it does suck when it's like, you know. But that is, you got to you got to look at it this way. It there has to be a significant penalty for being killed and coming back, right? right. It's it's not like otherwise. If you could just keep throwing it out there, yeah, no, it makes time sense. and time again. So. Okay, so I don't know you threw me off of what I was going to say. And Sorry. Thing, right? No, it's okay. Um, I could just tell you were thinking that that wasn't going to be the case. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> Sorry, Spook. I know I've asked for this before, and I know that it's been with the same person in question. I will say that we have had our arguments and disagreements in the past year that we've been together and adventuring. But the one thing that I can say for certainty is that she has saved my life on numerous occasions and ensured the survival of our mission, which is to uphold the law and enforce it to the best of our ability. And I also know that her challenging me, her worldview, even though different than, our, than mine, has challenged me and ensured that I thought deeply about the law and the ramifications of going against your wishes on a more serious and deeply spiritual level. So while I'm aware of the consequences and I'm aware of what I ask, she did die in helping us achieve a goal, and that goal is for there to be peace and not lawbreakers running rampant on this northern plain and threatening the lives of innocents who don't deserve to be die, don't deserve to die, get robbed, raped, all that. It also will help our conus maintain its just and order society by keeping them at bay for a time that Arconis can recover and hopefully the Lowlanders can band together a pursuit of which I would do. So please, Cuthbert, allow me to, with her wishes, if she wants, to come back to life and help us achieve these ends. And also kill the Baihu and Akurik and <laughs> those other guys who are assholes that probably want to break some laws and be bad. All right. And then I'm going to cast the spell and... Okay, so that's the first spell you're going to cast, right? You're saying? That's Resurrection, yeah. Okay. All right, so um, is Marlowe accepting of that Resurrection from Beyond the Grave? Yes. All right, okay. Um, then in that case, let's see. Um... And where is it? Poof! There we go. Okay. Um. All right. So yes. Um. So slowly but surely, you see, Marlo's eyes begin to kind of like move, and her chest suddenly starts to lift up and down slowly once more. Radvat, it's working. It's working. Marlo. Marla, you're like pat her a little bit. Hey, do you know who I am? Of course. Her memory's still there. Well, I would hope so. I mean, it's a more powerful version of the spell I cast before. Hi, Marlo. You need any water, food, something we can give you? And you I imagine you're cold. So I'm going to take out a blanket from my backpack. Did you find what you needed? Uh, we, we were successful, yes. Um, some things happened, which... Well, you know... Um, <laughs> we might... Well, I... I'm honor Where's bound. Where's Beecham? Uh, <laughs> so you remember that cat? <laughs> the gemmed cat. You know, the one I thought had been made for me. But he didn't. The one he made for Beecham instead. So, things got rough and Beecham had to run? He... Um, <laughs> he... he Betrayed us, Marlo. He <laughs> 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 had been planning to steal something particular from this treasure cache. And he made a deal to break that oath breaker who almost cut your head off before you got out of that situation. Um, they came down the ladder and with the intentions to take more, and Beecham got away. Using my gift. Alright. 
you seem to be not shocked by this. <laughs> there are far worse things. You know, being dead and all, it's <laughs> not the worst thing that's happened to me today. <laughs> did you see your teacher again? I did. Really? Well, what? Yeah. What did? What happened? I mean, I'm, the last time it was tough. We sensed that you were fighting to escape. This time I had to come back. Why? To protect <laughs> us and make sure we get our job done, hopefully? To protect you, maybe. A Kurt can't be allowed to live. He's been corrupted completely. Uh, Saris actually spoke with Cuthbert. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna see Radovan <laughs> fidget some and then lean forward, expecting you without his words to just say more. <laughs> oh. A current can't be allowed to live. Oh. And so. Cuthbert. Cuthbert wants us to get him. Right? Well, I don't want to put words in Cuthbert's mouth. I didn't speak with him. It's just, from the way Sarah says it, I had to come back, and it's possible that if I hadn't, that he would come after you. Oh, jeez. He's completely insane. What? How do we find him? I don't know. Well, he seems to be finding you just fine. I think we should settle this situation with the Jarl. And I guess we have two souls to pursue. I mean, I was not going to abandon you in this Akurik situation. Regardless, I feel he needs to go with that tiger thing, which seems to have it out for us anyway. Yeah, this is bigger than Arconis. This is... This is big. Okay. Well, I guess we should we should do what we need to do and then sort it out from there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I mean, it, it, do you, Marlo, is, we are with you. Right, Radovan? I, I will have to send a message back to Arconis about Beecham. Maybe they can put a APB out on him. An APB. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe the all these posters. wizards sending message spells oh. all over the place. <laughs> the diamond. You had to have a diamond. You got it from the dwarves, didn't you? Yes. Well, I'll have to pay them back for that. Well, look, I, I, I'm glad Cuthbert allowed me to bring <laughs> you back, and I'm glad you were willing to come back. I had resolved long ago that we need to tell the dwarves at Karvarok everything, the whole truth. They deserve to know A, where this place is, B, what we took, and C, what was going on with Beecham, this betrayal, and these, the Oathbreaker, and all of them that are dead in that room. So. So, yes, Marlo, I, I, and I, I got that from you. I mean, that's. We do, I feel we do need to pay them back in some form or fashion that is fair and just. But not before we see the Jarl. Agreed? Sure. Okay. I'm going to ask for another spell for Cuthbert. Okay. And it's not a spell I've ever used before, but I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to say, Cuthbert, time is of the essence. If you want me and Kia to help Marlo and pursue a Kurik and bring peace to this realm, I do not want to dilly-dally around these mountains, possibly risking life and limb over natural issues and 
possible pitfalls. And I'm going to ask for Windwalk. Okay. Windwalk is a spell that would allow me and some others to basically fly through the air and skip things. Which I'm aware is not necessarily something Cuthbert would probably want me to do, but that's the justification I'm using. All right, so show me Windwalk. All right. Windwalk? <laughs> no, it's Windwalk. <laughs> All right, so... Um, so normally a Windwalker flies at a speed of 10 feet with perfect maneuverability. If desired by the subject, magical wind wafts a Windwalker along at up to 600 feet per round, 60 mil- uh, miles per hour. With poor maneuverability, Windwalkers are not invisible, but rather appear as misty trend, uh, as mists and translucent. If full clothes in, um, if fully clothed in white, they are 80% likely to be mistaken as clouds, fog, or vapor. A Windwalker can regain its physical form as desired and later resume the clouds of each change to and from vapors for takes five rounds, which counts towards the duration of the spell, which is 17 um, hours. <laughs> so basically, um. You are 60 miles an hour for 17... You're going to make me math it, aren't you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, the the intention is to get back to the Arl as no, soon no, as I know. I've got, to, I, I've got to look at the distance. Um, um, so, so I am going to make it, but it's, I'll tell you the math. Because uh, it's going to be as the crow flies. Um, so it's a, it's a thousand twenty miles. If we go at full speed, um, port- from here to there, yeah, you'll make it. You'll get there in a day. If it's, only he- about, it's only about five to six hundred miles from here. Okay. All right. So, if I get it, I'm gonna I'm gonna say. Uh, uh, under the cl- circumstances, because of why you're asking for it, and it's not a selfish thing, um, yeah, I think that he would be Yay. fine with that. Um, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold Marlo and Kia's hand with the spell, and I'm gonna say, "Stick close, don't go gallivanting <laughs> off." You, you know, we can be close to each other, see each other, and let's All right, fly, um, motherfuckers! So yeah. <laughs> let's fly. <laughs> All and right, well, um, it takes you about 12 hours, pretty much like a giant. Why couldn't we from... do this in the first place as we're um, flying? So, yeah, uh, of Is course. the eagles? <laughs> on the journey, um, you know, it's really hard to sleep. Several people keep walking through, like, disturbing you because you didn't get an, you got an aisle seat, so there's a lot of people bumping into you. <laughs> a lot of other cloud people are knocking you about. Um, the snacks are crap on the flight. The food's terrible, barely warm. <laughs> Um, there's a crying baby almost the entire way, <laughs> but once you eventually get there, um, yes, you do land on the outskirts of Bregoas, and, home and I'm gonna, of the Jarl. Since I have a voice again with Kia shouting that, I'm going to say, you know why. I know. <laughs> it just still makes me angry. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, um, you are outside... The settlement. All right, let's try to get our peace and. I'm gonna let's leave our stuff outside the camp this time. You mean just bring in the what we owed, what we <laughs> said we would get? Yes. Oh, what? Like you don't trust him? Like he might take all your stuff a second time, Kia? <laughs> well, I don't really <laughs> have much fake. else besides that, so I'm gonna. Like your weapons and stuff, yeah. Uh, he'll know something's up if we come in without weapons, Kia. He knows. Well, I think we should just bring everything. Like. Oh, God. No, oh, oh, Cuthbert. Okay. Sorry, Cuthbert. <laughs> Fine. Alright, we're going to enter the... go south. I'm giving you the stink eye, though. You'll know what it means. I was right. <laughs> Alright, so once again, as you approach, you see the tower guards spot you and come rushing down to greet you um this time they are nowhere near as if, as long yeah if you put your hands up they're nowhere near as rough one of them kind of looks at you and just smiles and says hmm, yarl i am kind of sad to see you return 
Why? It means wealth you for you. <laughs> ah, it also means potentially no raiding for us too. That's fair. Yes, to the Jarl. Othric Albrechtsen will be eager to see you. Gonna follow him in. All right. Okay. Um, so once again, um, you begrudgingly enter the Jarl's longhouse. Um, of course, that long journey doesn't necessarily protect you in any way, shape, or form from the elements either. So. <laughs> Uh, it's probably a fairly welcome thing to arrive um, in this huge, warm <laughs> establishment once more. Uh, go ahead and alter some... It's not as windy in here, amazingly enough, so uh, that can go away. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. All right. Should we ask to see the high priest? I've got something to tell him that he's going to make him lose his shit. <laughs> uh... Sure my, what? <laughs> what, Marlo? He thought it was surprising that I was brought back from the dead once. <laughs> That's not something I think we should are. <laughs> I think we're good, right? This is this is get this over with. I'm gonna approach once I see the Jarl. Gesture. Okay. Um, well, it's it's kind of late evening when you arrive. They're all in the middle of you know feasting, gratu um, feasting. gratuitously. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's all they do if they're not killing <laughs> something. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, there we go. Okay. All right. So you approach as the jarl is uh, <laughs> wiping gravy from his beard, <laughs> holding half a chicken, half holding half a chicken leg. He kind of like indicates to you to help yourself to the food. Thank you, Jarl, but we are pressed for time, but hope to ensure you are satisfied and happy oh, as so we have returned. Yes, as I see. You have returned, no doubt, with um, all the wealth and uh, the riches that we promised, yes? Uh, would you like it on the table or in some back room or...? No, no, you can just put it right here in front of everybody. We have nothing to hide. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take out all the wealth that I know is from the cave. Okay, you start dumping it, scattering it onto the table in front. Um, um, Ragnhild kind of reaches over and grabs her hand on a few of the choicest piece of jewelry and holds it up and starts looking at it in the you know in the light. Um, most of the people that were stuffing their faces has kind of stopped. And are now all eagerly paying attention to the table. Um, with that, using the chicken bone, he starts to like poke things around to start <laughs> separating the gems from the go you know from anything gold. I uneasily glance at my comrades. <laughs> well, this is, uh, I suppose, adequate. Under the circumstances, I am not a, a man that can easily identify such riches, but um, there is a large quantity here. I feel that this is uh, necessary and um, appropriate, yes. You hear that? They have returned with wealth and riches. Unfortunately, you will all have to stay home this summer. You will not get to go and butcher, rape and pillage. And you hear them like, oh, and they start groaning and grumbling, and a few of them slam their mugs down with aggression. He goes, that, 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 but, 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 understand, this is for you as much as me. The normal rating shares will be equally taken out of this. Everybody will receive, and after all. So we cannot, under our agreement, attack the lowlanders. There are other places to raid. Other kingdoms to assault. Other places further afield that we may go <laughs> and find wealth <laughs> and prosperity for our Vikiri and the rest of our kin. And with that, they're all like, oh, and start cheering. <laughs> this is 
Very well. You can go and tell your lowland friends that they are safe. As per agreed for a, what did we say, a decade? You did. So for one decade, as I am Jarl Orthric Albrechtson, it is my word that as long as these lowlanders do not encroach upon territories that are known to be ours, we will not encroach upon territories known to be theirs. Is this to your satisfaction? Thank you, Jarl. That is to my satisfaction. And okay. they will get the Good. message. Um, so, um, as our business is concluded, um, did you perhaps bring me anything? A gift? To uh, show me your gratitude? Uh, anything extra that you found that you thought that I might like? As you can see behind me, I have a, <laughs> a vast collection of treasures and riches. I like fine things. <laughs> Tell him we're bringing Vidar. <laughs> <laughs> I, we had, as you know, as Marlo just said, Vidar. He oh, had yes. had some bonus gifts that we had wished to give to you. As you can see, he's not with us because he betrayed us himself and oh, left us to die. Did he? We are honor bound to. Bring him to justice, if it were, and... Ah, good, good. Um, if you wish to bring him here, we will uh, give him good justice. <laughs> may I, sec may I um, recommend a punishment for Vidar when you find him? After all, he betrayed all of us here when he left to come and seek you out. Uh, I've, I'm open to suggestions of Very justice. Very well. Uh, a fond uh, Vaikiri punishment for such a wretch um, would be to find some of his family and kin. Or at the very least, um, those that he finds near and dear. Have mm. them present. Um, strip him naked for the chest. And strap him from face first to a T-bar of wood. And then using a hand axe. Well, first you will use a knife and flay the skin from his back. Then using a blunt hand axe. You will smash his back ribs. I think we've ribs. heard enough. I think. Thank you. Uh, upon for your no, no, no. It's, at this point, he was only in great pain. He is not near death. Now, the punishment then, you would remove his lungs from his back and place them upon his shoulders like the wings of a bird, so that he will breathe his last breath with his lungs outside of his body. It is what we call <laughs> blood eagle. <laughs> and his family and friends will watch and if he should utter so much as a single cry they will also be put to death only by enduring the punishment solely and quietly will he reduce the punishment to be just upon himself we find this to be a great deterrent that is more than what my culture is accustomed in terms of punishment, but I see the value in it. I'm going to give Marlo and Kia this the like look. We will hunt him down. Well, if you find him, dispose of him as you see fit. I'm sure you have your own ways. I really do not care one way or the other. If but he I, returns I here, we will kill him. I, I do thank you, and... We will bring him to justice. We, what he deserves. Well, very well. Um, feel free to eat your fill, make merry. For the time being, you are considered a friend amongst us, and um, you know, stay as long as you feel that you wish to stay. Thank you, Jarl, and en enjoy the wealth. Well, a very small portion of it, unfortunately, belongs to me. Most of it, I will have to give to these. I'll keep a, a moderate amount for myself, of course. I understand. And I'm going to give like a little half bow <laughs> and try to That's get out of there without another word if yeah, it's possible. Leaving. I don't think I want to stay and eat here. <laughs> nope. <laughs> we're, we're oh, come on. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, we're noping out. Nope. Nope. All about the note boat. Okay. After all of that describing of punishment. <laughs> no, well, I'm, I'm moving Marlo. I don't, she's, she's alive now. She can move herself. Um... <laughs> Man, that was a little bit harsh. Well, I, I hope they mean what they say, and I hope 
I yeah, really they mean what they don't. say. They totally hack your ribs open and pull your lungs out. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who they're going to go after if not the Lowlanders. Well, we need to inform the Lowlanders of what happened, and then I guess finally go to the dwarves. Maybe the dwarves is who they're going after. Well, then we warned them. And I also, we try to fortify our conus with if they come by ship, which seems more likely. Yes. And then we go for Beecham and a Kirk, as promised, Marlo. All right, so uh, as you leave here, where do you want to go from here? Lowlanders first. Okay. Um, so you guys are going to travel all the way back to the lowlands. Uh, any particular town you want to go to? The, uh, where Elfric, not Elfric, um, Earskin is. The Earskins. Earskins, yeah. Earskin. Nice. The Earskin clan. Alrighty. The ones that like us. Kind of. Are there any that like you? No. <laughs> uh, Tolerators. So you're going to skein the but where you're heading. Alrighty. Let me go ahead and put Skanebrook back on the map, if that's where you're going. Alright, okay. Um, so from here, I mean, it's gonna, it takes you a good couple of weeks of overland travel. No, St. Cuthbert is not going to give you... <laughs> I'm not asking it. for it this I, time. I know you're not, so um, <laughs> that's why I'm saying it. I wouldn't expect Cuthbert to be like, yeah, now you can fly everywhere, you jackass. Yeah, I'd be like, sure, you lazy bastard. We'll do that. <laughs> um... <laughs> All right, so to Skanebrook then. Skanebrook. Uh, well, actually, no. Skanebrook is not where you want to go, is it? It's it's the no, uh, it's not it. actually the no. Place. You want to go to um. Yeah, that's not Skanebrook. Is not the one you want. You want. I think it's the right one. You want Cleon Lattic. That's right. That's where you want to go. All right, let me go ahead and put Cree and Larrick back on the map. Yes, Chief. Uh, Fingal Erskin. Oh, I think Cree and Larrick is already there. That's why I can't find it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Cree and Larrick is already here. Okay. All right, so to Cree and Larrick instead then. All right. Okay, so once you arrive back at Cree and Larrick a good couple of weeks later, um, do you are you guys gonna even try to take provisions from the Jarl's Longhouse before you try to make a two a two week across, or are no. you just gonna we're, eat Radavan's gruel? You're eating my gruel. I'm not. We're not <laughs> taking anything from the Jarl that we don't want. All right. All right. So yeah. Um, so once you arrive back in Clee and Larrick, you want to go to the tavern, or do you want to go straight to, straight to um, the guy. Um, Fergus Erskine? Well, no, um, it would be uh, Fingal Erskine, if you go into... Yeah? We're going to the, er the Fingal, yeah. All Let's right. Move. Ihorn is Fingal. Fingal is Ihorn. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, such a good movie. All right. So yes, uh, once you arrive, uh, he opens the door with a scowl and then, huh? <laughs> Hello. Uh, I didn't expect to see you anytime soon. Welcome, welcome. Thank come you. in, come in, you wee shites. <laughs> I love being called a wee shite. <laughs> <clears throat> we come bearing good news. Oh, really? Well, uh, yes. I have some good news of our own, too. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> well, yours first, sir. Yes. Well, um, while you've been gone, we took your uh, situation under advisement. Oh. And we've reached out. And the Smaldings, the Macduffs, 
and the Duncans have all agreed to rally in defence of the lowlands against these Vicari scum. Indeed, we have a small gathering of uh, nigh on 300 men ready to raise arms and march against these bastards. Oh, well, that's no. great that you rallied together and became a cohesive group. Good job on that. <laughs> but... But? It might, at least for the foreseeable future, not be necessary. We have, uh, hopefully brokered a ten-year truce with the Vikiri to keep them from coming into your lands. And you trust those Armadan bastards, you wee bomb pot? No, not fully. <laughs> but it is possibly a reprieve that you can utilize to strengthen your your relations, foster something with the dwarves in the, in the mountains, in case something truly does go... in case their untrustworthiness shows its ugly head. And how did you supposedly broker this peace with these uh, raving Amadan bastards in it? <laughs> well, we ventured far into their lands and removed an undead menace from a crypt that we suspect was blighting their lands and preventing their crop from growing. This was one of their reasons for wanting to raid south. We hope we have succeeded in this front. And also we gave them a little bribe of wealth that we found in one of the caves. Oh, did you? In the mountains. How which... much are we talking about? We gave them 25,000. Oh, you wished! How much? 25,000! <sighs> Go on, bury yes. your head! I wouldn't have paid them a damn penny. Let them come. Well, well, the... I've been I've been meaning to talk to you. I, I'm I know you, these are your lands and you're proud of them and you're hardworking folk, very proud. You know, you are aware that south of this mountain range there is a whole swath of lands that seems un unused, right? Hey, Between where you're from and where where where, where I'm from in Arconis, like a whole range. Between two mountains ranges, basically, it's not as cold and possibly can be farmed and utilized by you and your folk. Hey, but we have a plenty of uh, tracts of land here, closer to home, mind. Then I need to travel anywhere near that sort of distance and across dangerous, treacherous mountains. No, no, we're much better off where we are. I, I at least the new. Well, that that honestly saddens me a little, because you as neighbors to the north would closer to Arconis would, I think, do us both a good service. But I understand that these are your lands, and you've been here for hundreds of years. I just... I wish there wasn't such a large expanse of land between us, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, uh, feel free to create a settlement just on the other side. And uh, who knows? Maybe they have a great once in a while we can pop around and visit, do a little trading of our own. <laughs> anyway, you're all a mighty red faced and look a little bit uh, little bit dishevelled <coughs> from the cold, so get you a swallow of whiskey, you bastards. <laughs> um, and with that he kind of goes over to the table and grabs the a bottle of scotch and pulls the cork out with his teeth, takes a huge big swig. And then walks over and like just shoves it into Radavan's chest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it to start drinking it. And... Give me some of that. It's been so long. <laughs> All right, take a big swig of it. Feels good to be inside. Uh, he kind of turns around and offers the bottle to Marlo. Like, <laughs> I'm good, thank you. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's I... yourself, lass. I think it's uh, honestly the opposite of that. Uh, well, shh, but yes, um, I, I promise you here and now that I'm aware of this situation and the potential for betrayal. So I will be maybe not immediately here, but we'll keep my eye on this lands and 
help if I can am able from what we also need to do now. We're not quite done. But I want you to know that I'm aware, and the kingdoms far to the south are also. Well, I understand, but you'll be going nowhere tonight, right? So what say we all just sit around and get shite-faced? <laughs> Fuck okay. it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm gonna just nod. <laughs> Grab the bottle back and drink another swig. <laughs> Thinking right. about how Marlo can't get shit faced. <laughs> okay, well it's not long before um, oh, well, Aaron well, shows up, it. the chieftain of the clan, his son, and um, is more than happy to partake and get sorted in. Yeah, poor Marlo what can't saying, actually Marlo? get drunk. So <laughs> I'm actually going to go out into the snow and train and punch the snow. I'll get those levels back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. That's only one. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> All right, so you kind of go out and just... Which makes kind of sense, you know, get yourself back into your routine, back of what you're used to. Everybody else sits around and gets hammered on good scotch. Um, you can all sleep here in his place the night if you want to. Um, Move Marlo can yes, sleep outside. Radovan said or he loved me the other under, day. <laughs> under his porch, <laughs> or in the barn, whatever she prefers. <laughs> and guess what? I said I love you back when he was sleeping. <laughs> Cheers. He says, "Well, <laughs> there's a spare double bed upstairs." <laughs> I. The floors we might be creaky, and so may done. be the bed, but we didn't mind if you want to go rocking. <laughs> we're, we're, I don't think we're going to do that because we're drunk, and that's oh. a mistake we don't want to accomplish. <laughs> yeah, drunk people don't do that at all. Yeah, that never happens. <laughs> Drugs never make those kind of mistakes. All right, well, maybe maybe we do. We just won't tell chat, right? Maybe it happens. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. You'll never know, chat. It's a secret be a that they're refusing situation. to share with you. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> Even though there's a huge crash and the bed comes through the ceiling and they hit the floor and... <laughs> no. All right, okay, so, um, yeah, you pass away the evening merrily, happily, getting drunk. Few people come by and visit, share a drink Except with you. Except for Marlo, because and... she's outside yep. training like everyone's life depended on it. Because it very well might. <laughs> <coughs> Alrighty. Okay, yeah, so you wake up with sore heads probably the following day. And then what do you wish to do? Gonna get provisions and maybe... Well, they, do they have skiffs here? Probably not, right? They're not dwarves. We're gonna make our way to the dwarves. Alright, so um, you this spend the next nightmare. couple of days... Um, well, next... A couple of hours preparing in the morning and then leaving back following your path that you already know. Um, yeah. You head to the city of Karavarak instead. My, you guys are putting some uh, miles on your shoes. Well, Copper's not letting us fly there because, you, know. you know, that would be too that would easy. Be too convenient. All the wrongs that you might be able to write on the journey. Okay. <laughs> um, so once you get to Karvarak, where do you want to travel? Where do you want to go? <laughs> Board of the mountain. <laughs> Let's get in trouble. Oh God. <laughs> We're going to get ourselves killed there. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, this, yeah, this might be fun. All right. Um, so to the city of Karvarak. Um, as you are already known to be dwarf friends, you have no problem walking up. Um, down the main street, past the deep, delve in, um, Giesel's place, the various different taverns. Um, let's see where we're we going. As as we approach, I'm going to say it's just like the fake court. We 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 tell the truth. We lay our intentions bare. I hated the fake court. Do you know what I had uh, to do well, for a whole year? Well, these guys are probably more. Well, possibly forgiving. I know. This is the right thing, though. Just remind myself of that. It's the right thing. We didn't take more than we knew. We know where it is. We can show them the location. It's all theirs. And, as Marlo said, we can pay them back. It's 35,000 gold in value. Okay. Alright, okay. As you wander in, um, you see Bargand Ironbeard sitting, sitting upon his mighty throne. Um, to his right, um, <clears throat> you see the 
um, Lunric Thordain, the head of the Runesmiths Guild, and um, standing over, about to walk down the stairs as you open the doors and wander in, is the um, Marshal of the Mountain, Skalfmir Durstok. Uh, he s sees you approach and smiles and waves at you eagerly as you enter the, the uh, chamber. Okay. Oops. I'm behind. Okay. Greetings. <laughs> well, he looks at you. Oh. Uh, greetings indeed. It is a pleasure to see you back. I am sure uh, Lord Ironbeard will uh, be just as happy to see you. It's, it, Ironbeard's there, right? Yeah, he's sitting up on the throne, stroking his massive beard with one fist on his chin, as he often does. So I'm, I'm going to immediately, not menacingly, but kind of like take out my weapon and lay it on the floor. Right, well, and as I'm soon also... as you draw the weapon out, Instantly, all the guards at the front of the <laughs> stairs and to the side, you notice them bolster up, ready in right. case. Which is why I immediately like yeah. bend down and put it on the on the floor, and right. I'm going to take my shield. And as soon as you shield. do that, you see Berg and Iron Beard just like, raise his hand to tell people to stop. I'm going to take my <laughs> shield off, relax. and put it as well on the floor, and then I'm going to extract the rod that opens the cache. Okay. And I'm going to put it on the floor as well, like separate from the weapon and shield. Gore, right. I would like to know how the dwarves react when Radovan undoes his pants to remove the rod. <laughs> <laughs> what he's stuffed down there. <laughs> I have it in a more manageable place. Yeah, he's, he had it just tucked in. Beecham had it strapped to his thigh. <laughs> and then I'm going yeah, to... It still probably looks a little awkward as Radovan stuffs his hand down his britches and starts fiddling around and pulls out something long <laughs> and hard. Um. <laughs> and then I, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna kneel and bow my head. And I'm gonna say, "I, Radovan Rainier, War Priest of Saint Cuthbert, throw myself at your mercy." Uh, he raises an eyebrow, kind of curiously, and then so uh, <laughs> leans forward and says, "And why might you be doing that?" It's a motorcycle. Excuse <laughs> you. <laughs> Wait, what was that, Gore? Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> he says, you... and why would you be doing that? We made a deal with the Jarl weeks ago to cleanse their lands of a blight that was affecting them and repay them of the debt that they built their ships on with the intentions to raid the Lowlanders and more. Beecham, who, as you can see, is no longer with us, spoke of a location that might have such wealth that could help us bring peace to this region. And in desperation, for we were only given like 35 days, we ventured into the mountains and so found such a site. There we were betrayed by Beecham. This, we were confronted by an oathbreaker who was last seen being escorted in here and three dwarf compatriots of his mm. a fight ensued these four were killed by kia and myself marlo had unfortunately met a different fates i'm although... actually staring at radovan as he says this because i didn't realize the oath breaker was there oh uh, we would have told you marlo well we had weeks to travel at least you I... just uh, either way you, she, she knows now <laughs> all right we um didn't take anything beyond the 35,000 gold in value that we needed and we I come here now knowing the location of this vault and the key to it which I will of course direct you to for we know it is rightfully yours it's rightfully mine we were brought to an ancient cache of wealth that belongs to you this this cache where did you find it what did it look like it was far into the mountains it was uh the the cavern had been littered with some frost giants and some can you repeat the runes that you had read to us oh I, well i'm gonna take i'm gonna take the the 
the scepter, right, the key. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna remove the scroll and offer it, you know, kind of half bowed still. I to... happen to have taken a rubbing. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. With that, Scalfmere Doorstock comes over and picks it up and takes a good look at it, and then raising an eyebrow, he ascends the stairs and uh, turns into Marlow. Apparently, um, he t- ascends the stairs and hands it to a bargained Iron Beard, who looks at it. Are um, you giving him the key as well? The... Oh, yeah. Okay. Given, yeah. Right, you see him look at it. Uh, with that, he passes it over to his right without looking. And um, the runesmith, Lundric Thordain, picks it up and starts to examine it closely. <sighs> Tell we... me more about the Oathbreaker and uh, these other dwarves that uh, followed you into the mountains. <sighs> That is a part of the story that I'm not fully aware of. I know that my accent laden friend Beecham uh, had apparently orchestrated this. The Oathbreaker that we had un- unpetrified and brought to you apparently had followed us into this cache with the intentions to steal everything, and we stopped him. Well, it was a. Many weeks ago that the Oathbreaker and a couple of our guards disappeared. We had a reason to believe that he had help escaping from inside the city. Well, I imagine the guards, they were, they had mohawks and were tattooed red and green, if that helps identify them. Mm. They wouldn't have had at the time, but um, if they chose a path of dishonor, then that may well be a thing that they choose to adopt, as is often the way with our kin. Turning their back on Dwarven society. But you say your friend, uh, this Beecham, orchestrated this uh, escape. Yes, he had. He had been our friend and guide through these lands, and. Honestly, for all intents and purposes, I trusted him. Until we got to this vault, he apparently stuffed his robes and his tunic full of stuff and found some metal box, which I don't know what was in it, and then escaped. <laughs> and what would be the full name of this Beecham fellow? James Beecham. The Vicaria Dome is Vidar. Cameron Beecham. Is it Cameron Beecham? <laughs> <laughs> James Beecham, the Vicaria call him Vidar. Are we sure Very that's well. his real name? I don't know of that, but we you you were he was in your presence a few times. You'll give the, the best time. description of this man that you can to Scalfbeer Dorostock. Dorostock, ensure that this James Cameron Beecham, also known as Vadir, has his name entered into the Book of Grudges. So that if any dwarf from Caravalic should come across him, they will bury an axe in his skull. And we, in any capacity you wish, will show you these, this vault, and for it is yours and belongs to the city. Quite right, it belongs to this city. And we will meet any punishment you may bestow upon us and feel we deserve. Although we intend to repay you in everything that we used to broker this peace. If you would allow us. Please. Could you describe in detail what it is that you took to uh, create the sum of uh, this wealth that you gave to these Vicarii? Uh, It was portable jewels for the most part. Can you Um, describe each and every jewel? (laughs) We We can try. We need to make great account of what's missing. Uh, Honestly, I... (laughs) I can't with a great account with everything. (laughs) But I am... I do know who possesses said riches. Hmm. It is been distributed amongst the amongst the Vikiri to the east. We will have to take it under advisement whether or not we decide to go after this treasure <laughs> and reclaim it. <laughs> that might be interesting. After all, it's uh, of no concern of theirs. 
Nor was it yours to give, Radavan Rhaenyr. It wasn't just Radavan, sir. It was I as well. It was not Marlo, however. She did not partake in any of that. Well, at least one of you has some level of decorum and honor. <laughs> I was dead at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> there was a diamond that was used to bring me back to life, though, and I intend to provide any services to repay you for that. But I can't the, be dead yet. The value of this diamond? It's 10,000. 10,000? So a, a prize, then? I, yes. You promised to return this money to us. As obviously, the uh, diamond is long since gone. That was done within a ritual of my faith to Absorbed green Marlo. Body. <laughs> it was a cost of her resurrection. So 10,000 gold was taken in the form of a great precious diamond and the yes. rest you said how much? It was 25,000. Are I'm, you sure it was no more? As far as I know that was I didn't, didn't intend to take anything more than that. We just wanted to placate mm. the Vikiri to foster peace in this land for at least 10 years, which I hope we have right. succeeded in. Well, then by our reckoning, and he takes a great big dip, um, and you see him pick up his his um, flame brand axe and lay it across his, his lap in a very official looking fashion. And you see him give a nod to Scalfmere Durstock who in turn nods at the gate, at the the guards at the door, and you notice that they close the door and move in front of it. Uh. Well, by the rightful reckoning of I, Baragond Iambe, Lord of the Hall, Master of Care Varak, you owe the dwarven kin a sum of 35,000 gold. We will take your word for it that this is the sum, and it is no more. That is correct. Do you have means to pay this debt? Not at this moment, no, admittedly. I'm afraid, with these matters at hand, the debt must be paid in full before you leave these halls, or you will spend a year in the lower caverns and the dungeons of Ker Varak, a year per thousand gold that you owe. Do you uh. wish to spend 35 years in the dungeons of Ker Varak, or do you wish to make good on this debt? We would like to make good on this debt, if that is an Then bring request. forth this 35,000 gold crowns. If we had 35,000 gold crowns, we wouldn't have borrowed from your cash. <laughs> right, uh, everybody give me a um, sense motive. <laughs> Slap him with your dungeon sausage. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> All right, Marlo is taking it obviously very seriously. Kia and Radavan, however, you notice there's just a, a tiniest of crack at the corner of his mouth like he's trying to hold back something. Oh. Finally, he says... Fortunately for you, <laughs> the finder's fee for the lost cash of Dunathoin is precisely 35,000 gold <laughs> crowns. <laughs> I was about to give you my shield and weapon and walk out into this cold naked. Lord of the that, mountain. See, Marlo um, does not look amused at all. Durstock grins very, very heartily, and you see him like do this to the go the door guards as they immediately move back <laughs> out of position. I do say that to him, by the way, as after I saw the crack and the laughter began. He says, "No, no, such gifts are not necessary. If indeed, of course, what you see is true." And he looks across, and um, you see. Um, <clears throat> you see uh, Lundric Thordane he says I will have to consult the uh, the correct scriptures but by all reckonings this does indeed look to be the keys of our, one of the keys of our ancestors 
No. Truth be told, and you have managed to find this location, you have done a great deed for our kind. The fact you. that you have gained or spent in, I am sure good faith is forgotten. Tis a sum that we near do not concern ourselves with where you're concerned. Although we may still go and take it up with a Vicari at some point. Um, may, may I suggest you utilize the low letters <coughs> and forge a stronger alliance if well, that uh, indeed comes. Uh, dwarven matters of uh, private matters such as these, uh, we won't go looking to uh, outsiders for help. After all, uh, they may want to share, and uh, that's not appropriate. Fair enough. No, no, you don't. You don't need to worry <laughs> yourselves about that. The first thing we have to do is uh, put together an expedition. He says, um, you hear that, Dorostock? Go and find Grimrak Balak. Get him to get as many of his men together. And uh, we will go find this Dwarven Cash. I trust you can give us uh, detailed instructions on exactly oh, yes. how to find it. Oh, yes. Indeed, we will. Excellent. You're going to need a lot of carts and bags. Climbing utensils and... Oh, when it comes to mountaineering and uh, the removal of wealth, me and the rest of my kin are well versed in the skills and necessary tricks of the tree. No, no, we'll have every damn coin out of that mountain inside of a year. <laughs> well, once again, you've come before me and... Uh, Brought us good news. Well, I've said it before, we'll say it again. You're always welcome here in the city of Kervarak. When you return to the south, be sure to tell your great king, Marcus Aurelian III, that the lord of the whore, Burgund Ironbeard, sends his well wishes. We will, definitely, sir. Thank you, my lord. Now, what's your name again? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm the only one that is permitted such humor here in these halls, Radovan. Radovan, shut it. Okay, I'll shut up. Guys. And he kind of grins, kind of like half smirks as he says it. Nope. Enjoy the hospitality here of our city for as long as you need. Thank you again. <coughs> I'm going to take my weapon and shield and... She did. Oh, that's mine. You give that to me. No. <laughs> no. I heard you see it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. I guess we're going to go to the bar and. Uh, nope. Marlo's going to the library. Oh, okay. Library. I'm going right, to follow so Marlo. Marlo makes her way to the library in the underhalls. Which tavern are you guys going to? I think we're gonna follow Marlo. Yeah, we're gonna follow Marlo. If she if she deviates, we're okay. Uh, what do you guys want to do in the underhouse? I'm trying to find as much information pertaining to a Kirk as I possibly can. Oh, uh, you want to look for stuff on a Kirk? On him, on the type of magic that he uses, the Bayhu, everything. All right. Yeah, because before you were searching for stuff on the uh, Bayhu, right? Yes, I remember. Yeah, I'm trying to find connections. I need I need to get smart and I need to do it quickly. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so you want to go and spend as many hours as you can poring over books. Um you're welcome to stay here for as long as you need to to do that. Um, but obviously, just like it took you last time when you were just looking for scraps of information regarding the uh, Bayhu you know, that took you days and days of poring over the book. So, um, you know, you do as much research as you can today. Um, you know, until you start getting tired and weary. I mean, you guys have been wandering around in the mountains and traveling an awful lot without proper rest for a while. So, yeah, so uh, I'm going to help Marlo. And then when it gets really late, I'm going to retire to the Delving Inn, I guess. Okay. All right. So you all want to head there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So you guys head to the deep delve in. Um, let's go ahead and take you to that spot. Mm -hmm. 
I've lost an entire tavern. There it is, right? <laughs> I'm going to sit down, order a drink for all three of us, regardless of Marlo not being able to. All right, let me uh, fix my audio. I'm going to have Cal come out and order him some milk. All <laughs> right. Okay, so Cal gets a nice big plate of milk. You all get whatever beverage you want. <clears throat> the fancy golden stuff. If we have any money. <laughs> um, I mean, you've probably still got a yeah. spattering left. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. You know. I want to get the best. The best of the best for tonight. All right. Um, do you want to... Do, do you guys want to give me a figure of how much gold you stash for yourselves, Radovan? I, I have a hundred. You so. took a hundred? So you... A hundred a hundred um, gold, Kia? Probably about a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so Kia pockets a thousand. Radovan pockets a hundred. Um, so, we already know that Marlo didn't, but doesn't need money anyway. Why would she? So I'm gonna, when we sit down with our golden drinks, I'm going to look to Marlo and say, is there a particular place you wish to pursue a Kurek, or? I don't know. It, he, If he's still back in Fujinami, the fact that he was able to contact me while I'm here... Do you think... I'm going to lie, that scares me. Do you think... You can use that connection to figure out where he is, if he can figure out where you are. I don't use the type of magic that he uses, and I never would. Well, I, 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 have, I have no qualms about going wherever we need to to get him. I just know that I know where... The thing is, I know exactly where Beecham is. You do? Well, he's in the Panera. He was in Arconis, and we can trace his steps from that location and track him, possibly. It's been weeks. How you think his footsteps are still going to be in the dirt? I think it's more about location, right? Him breezing through town, him with golds, wanting to offload it. We could probably trace him and track him and bring him to justice. <sighs> He, he is a drunk, he probably, well, he was pretty secretive, so maybe he's not the kind of blab, but he might think he got away with it, right? So, so send word to Raysa and let them deal with it. I, I honestly wouldn't mind returning to Arconis and updating the king anyway, but... <sighs> if you really want to stay up here in the north... We need to find a lead, I guess, right? How are we going to do that? I don't know, honestly. I'm Honestly, I'm sick of the cold. Part of me was <laughs> thinking we would head back home to Arconis and Rock Elm and update the king, see Raysa, fill her in on our latest adventure, and track down Beecham. But if that's not what we're going to do, I guess, let me know what we are going to do. So we're not just shuffling around in the snow and freezing our ass off. What do you think, Marla? I don't know. I don't think. Well, I think we should return to Arconis, even if it's temporarily. King Marcus deserves us to tell him in full. I, I can, you know, obviously send messages, but that'll take a long time, and there's probably some questions that they'd have. I mean, you've been gone from Arconis for well over six months. So, I mean, it's been half a year since you've been Could home. we get Tadros to teleport us? <laughs> I don't think he's ever been this far north. I, I think... Get down to Rock Helm, into that area where he teleported I, us last time. I think, if anything, they need... Arconis needs to be on alert. If they have any waterfronts, any ocean they might get raided by the Vikiri down the line, right? So they need to be fortified. 
Honestly, that's where my concern is right now. Right. I still want to go for a Kurik and the Baihu. I still want to go for Beecham, but my heart is my heart is an Arconis, and I do honestly miss it. I do miss Raysa. I'm scared if we go there, though. Will we put people in danger from... Marlo's? I can't think of the name right now. <laughs> A Kirk? If... And also, we could... We could talk to my church if... He did indeed talk to Cuthbert. My church could probably play, play a role as well in helping track him down. I mean, as nice as Dunathan is, you know, I don't know him personally, and I sure as hell don't know Odin. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we could, we could appeal to my church and possibly find a way to track Akura down in Arcona, from Arconets. You definitely have idea. more allies in Arconis, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it it took us a long time to find Rorschach, right? I mean, we... It was like a year of you tracking him with that shadow dick. The shadow! <laughs> oh, boy, I miss him. But not really. He was a dick. <laughs> so that's my pulse. Where is your heart, Marlo? <laughs> she just kind of stares at the table. <laughs> well, we'll sleep on it. At least we know we're going to be sleeping here, so... Well... Well, whatever adventure we do next, we'll do it from, we'll start from, this will be our start point to the next step. And with that, Radovan's going to take out one of the two iron bands that he uses for the shield other spell that he had previously given Marlo. Right. And he's going to look at Kia and he's going to say, I have a very important question to ask you. Alright. Go it, baby. And baby. we'll stop it right there, I think. That's appropriate. <laughs> um <laughs> I get I get the hint. Um, Alright. There what? we go. Um and thus brings us to the end of the Mists of Cairn Moor. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, I'm Gorbad. Welcome to the Orcs Nest. I'm the Dungeon Master here on How We Roll, and if you'd like to follow me personally, you can do so on Twitter, at Gorbad. Check out thedmblog.com for all things Dungeon Master and Dungeons and Dragons related. And of course, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash Gorbad. Also guys, don't forget to keep up with all things How We Roll. Follow us on Twitter, at How We Roll. Check out the website, www.howryroll.com and make sure you follow us on YouTube as well. Cheers, guys. Shagget here. On How We Roll, I play Radovan Rainier, War Priest of St. Cuthbert, who just so happened to author a new academic book that's coming soon. It's titled Libido Rectification for the Required Propagation of Arconis' Depleted Men at Arms, or more affectionately titled Mandate Number 2 and You. You can follow me on Twitter at Ineb underscore Convos for upcoming book excerpts. Just to get the hype going. You know, push up the sales. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. I'm the Dragon Spooker, and I play Marlo Rayfell, monk and resident badass for How We Roll. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so using at Dragon Spooker, or follow my Twitch channel, which I sometimes stream on. Twitch.tv slash the Dragon Spooker. Hi, thanks for watching another episode of How We Roll. I am Janie Bonna, and this is my lovely cat, Norman, who really doesn't want to be here right now. You can follow me on Twitter at Jane on Twitch with a zero. Shh, don't tell him he doesn't like birds. No. Um, I stream occasionally on twitch.tv slash Jane so you can find me there. And I guess that's all we got. You got something to say? Nope. Peace, suckers. Bye.